Good morning and welcome to the final day of the GB3 season here at Donington Park. I'm John Jackson and we have Lewis McGlay with us because we need to talk about how Callum Voisin can win the championship in this next race. Now he's basically got to beat Alex Dunn. Yeah, pretty much uh, as simple as that. Uh, in a sense, if uh, Callum wins the race, Alex needs to be in, in second. Uh, if, if Callum's in third position, championship done. If Callum's in second, then uh, Alex needs to be in third, weirdly enough. Uh, the only one where it's kind of like there's a bit more of a room is if Callum's in third position. Alex Dunn could be six, uh, but then if that is the case, then there's 35 points between them, so we'd have to go on the camera, blah, blah, blah. At that point, it's very unlikely for Voisin. Basically, Dunn needs to be right up the rear end, or if not, ahead of Voisin wherever possible. Right, so with Callum Voisin starting on pole position and Alex Dunn starting second in this race, he was third yesterday, basically the first corner is probably where Alex Dunn needs to make a move. Yeah, big time. I mean, uh, the only issue, and I'm sure they will have studied it in the replays and stuff yesterday, Voisin's start yesterday was actually really, really impressive. Got off to a really healthy start down to the first corner and kind of like the expectation is maybe he's going to do the same thing again. Alex Dunn needs to make sure that that is not the case. Obviously, it's going to be still fairly cold, 10 o'clock this morning. It's still mm. going to be fairly cold out of the circuit. It's still going to be a little bit damp. So uh, kind of got to try and make the most of that, depending on which side of the circuit's wet or not. Yeah, it's going to be a really, really exciting one. Yesterday was a little bit hampered by a little bit of moisture out on the track and a little bit of uh, the potential of rain coming down. 
clear skies here today. Very, very cold, but I wouldn't say there's much chance of rain at all. Uh, we're going to talk in just a little second while you're going to see what happened in the second part of our mansion chat uh, <laughs> about what we uh, thought of the season and some drivers that we need to shout out that aren't in the title picture. But first, let's revisit yesterday, the first race of the weekend here at Donington Park. Highlights from the first race in the Donington Decider in GB3 as we were underway with Callum Voisin starting from pole position in some very difficult conditions. Up towards the first corner in his road in Carlin, it was a comfortable lead for him. There was a bit of a squeezing off in the background for Noah Ping, but it was all in the foreground where the drama was happening. The 84 of Joseph Lake to the inside sending off Mackenzie Cresswell, and then all of this in the mid-pack. Uh, obviously the likes of Michael Shin, uh, Daniel Mavliatov off the road, uh, along with the likes of Ollie Stewart. Uh, because of where Shin's car was, it would bring out a safety guy who was unable to get back going under his own volition. Uh, once the car did get uh, back onto the road, the race was back underway with Callum Voice in leading. Daniel Mavlitov was out wide going through the old hairpin, uh, having a few problems. He'd pick up a lot of grass and have to return to pit lane to, uh, to get some of that grass taken out from his car. Meanwhile, John Bennett and Joseph Loke were fighting in the background. Loke trying to work his way back up the order after first lap dramas that would send him down to 13th position. Late in the race, there was contact going through the final corner as Noah Ping uh, was sent around by Ollie Stewart, who would then get stuck on the barrier. This would bring out the safety car once more uh, and the race would not resume. So Callum Foyzen would come through the final corner to take yet another win at Donington Park and his second of the season, uh, of course, uh, ahead of Matthew Rees. Hello and welcome back to the GB3 Mansion where we're going to take a look at some of the drivers that have impressed us this season. And Piers and Lewis, I have to say, for me, Mackenzie Creswell, a second year driver in the GB3 Championship, things have clicked at some point in this season, Lewis, and he's just been really, really consistent. And that has really impressed me. And I know it, he would like to be first all the time, as all drivers would, but getting two second places out in Zambor, it was just the latest in a long string of impressive results from him. Yeah, well, we talked about, I said this so many times on, on broadcast, when it came to that second race at Zambor, it was six podiums in seven races, right? That's just you know, impressive forks, of course. Uh, one of those races for Kansas, fair enough, that was the, the Silverstone one. And then uh, one of those was reverse grid race. But to have that ability to just pick off posts, to, to qualify consistently, to be up there in the championship, like with the championship protagonist, and say, actually, no, do you know what? It's me you should be worried about. Yeah, he's a little bit too far out for the championship, but he's been so, so impressive in the second half of the season. And I have no doubt that's going to kind of continue on into Donington. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. It is. And it's kind of like the second half of the season has almost been like what you'd want from a championship campaign, but he just started almost on the back foot and is having yeah. to do catch up. But not what someone else that's kind of always been there or thereabouts, James Headley. You know, we were talking to James Headley at the first round and he was like, you know, I don't know if I'll, I'll be back for any more rounds this season. And lo and behold, he turns up and even into Zandvoort was with an outside chance of the championship. Of course, unfortunately, with that issue in race one, it's put him a bit further down. So he's going to have to fight back this final weekend of the year. But he's really shown that he's got the pace and that Arden VRD team have also moved up with him. And he's uh, him and his teammates have worked really well together. Yeah. 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 We've seen big, big flash from like Chris Studio and Ping as well. So, yeah, they've all kind of like been working their way forward as a squad, uh, which has been amazing. Uh, but then, you know, speaking of other kind of three car teams that have been pretty good, obviously, we speak about um, Rodin Carlin, my boy John Bennett, it's only because he's uh, from Salisbury, it's fine. Nothing about the Mackies, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but then he, I will say, this is kind of the thing where I like, we're talking about drivers that have been impressive in their second year. I, I kind of have this thing with John, um, with the, you know, maybe with a couple of other drivers, where it's like, I, I haven't quite seen the same speed as what we saw in that first. I mean, we have flashed it. I think it's Silverstone, the pole, the pole's mark. He looks really, really strong uh, at Silverstone. But then he just kind of hasn't quite captured it in the same way that he did capture our imagination at the start of last year where he was kind of he had so many top tens I think it was um, five top tens in the first five races and then just you know kind of bumbled on through the season got podium with the final race someone on the similar vein with the, someone that we expected to be right at the front of the championship this year that maybe hasn't quite shown some promise that they were showing last year Matthew Reese for JHR Developments his teammate Joseph Lope we've touched on a moment ago in the First part, he's been right up there and is in the championship fight. And Matthew Reese, towards the, I think the last three or four rounds last year, was one of the highest scoring drivers and was banging in podiums like they were going out of fashion. And unfortunately, I think it's really unfortunate for Matthew Reese. It seems like if anything could go wrong, any little thing, it's just every time he, you know, thinks he's just about getting to where he should be, something then hampers him and he's, you know, qualifying doesn't quite go right, which then sets him up poorly for race one. And He's right there with his teammate. We know he's got the pace, his racecraft. You know, he never holds back at all. But then occasionally, sometimes he just pushes it a little too far. And it's just been a little scrappy from Reese. And 
I don't think it's any discredit to him. He's clearly got the speed, clearly got the race craft, but hopefully he can just, you know, put a few things together, maybe this final race weekend to either go for another championship challenge next year or go on to bigger and better things and, and, and learn from, from this season. Yeah, uh, other drivers that we should shout out, maybe drivers that have come in uh, and taken part in their first se series. Uh, obviously, you know, Jared Roberski is someone we followed from GB4 up into GB3. He's maybe found it a little bit more of a struggle, had some issues with the car that maybe haven't been his fault. But to jump to GB4 from South Africa with him and his dad, and we followed their progress from three days notice, jumping over, doing the first round of GB4 at Snetterton last year, doing that, doing incredibly well in the championship, and then jumping in the GB3 car. And, you know, being competitive at times, I think is a, a, a real impressive thing, especially when you're that young being away from your family. Are there any other drivers that, you know, you've, you've seen sparks of brilliance from, maybe pick one each for me uh, this season? Do you know, I'm, I'm going to go more... Uh... Because I know, I think I know who you're going to go for. So I'm not going to go for this one. Uh, I'm going to go for more recently because I kind of was a little bit critical of someone um, like Suter around, mostly based on how he drove at, uh, at Zanthor because it was like a completely different driver. And I have that faith that that's the kind of thing. It's like in this championship, when everything's so close, you can sometimes just sort of like click very late in the season. And when things click, you you kind of find not like oh a couple of hundreds here and there. You can find like quite a lot of time. And in this championship, that puts you from the mid-pack right up into the top 10. I kind of think that's what's happened with Suzuka around here. Uh, obviously, Michael Shin had a couple of good rounds like back in um, uh, uh, Spa, I think it was really, really fast as well. But there's just something about like a round, but obviously the cool, it's called cool, Red Bull right, as well. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty mega on the grid. But just, I get the feeling that things are clicking in that camp. Yeah, I mean, we know that car's fast. But on, I think another driver that's come in this season that potentially kind of, in a sense, out of nowhere, to a certain extent, it was... Tim Ekuharchik for, for Douglas. And you knew I was going to say it. Yeah, but, but, and sometimes, you know, at the first round at Alton Park, he was absolutely rapid. We were watching him go through um, through Cascades at Alton Park. And that Douglas, it, it was making that Douglas absolutely dance. <laughs> and some rounds he's been absolutely on it. You know, he was challenging Callum Voisin for the win at Setterton and unfortunately came together with him. But that shows the pace. You know, he was probably the fastest driver that weekend at, at points. But then that's punctuated by you know, catastrophic results, like when he took out Callum Voisin and just pushing a bit too hard here and there. He's had a, quite a few crashes this season, some of which are his fault, some of which haven't been his fault. But I think if he can keep that pace that he's had at points this season and maybe comes back next year with, you know, a, a more mature head on his shoulders, you know, a bit more experience under his belt, he could do what Callum Voisin has done. Now here with David Morales, 12th in the first race here at Donington this weekend. That was uh, an interesting race there because it felt like the tyres needed to be wet tyres, but then the track was a little bit too dry. It, it was a bit of a 50-50, like by the time we go out, we start the race, um, the tyres are in like a good window, but as it kept going, it's getting drier and drier and drier and the rears are getting really, really hot. So it was a 50-50 race. Honestly, before the race, I was kind of like thinking of doing the gamble, but uh, there, there would have been no point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we saw a bit of a gamble in qualifying from a few of the drivers. Did you? Uh, what, what was your strategy for qualifying? Were you just going full wets? Because I know Nico Christodoulou started on slicks and regretted it instantly. Mm. Uh, no, no, no. We were just going to go wets the whole way because uh, just it's too cold and to get the temp in and so on, it's pretty difficult. So yeah. Okay. Obviously, your second season in GB3, and we've got mm. two races left this year. Yeah. It seems like it's gone really, really quick. What's been the, the highlight of this year for you? I think the, definitely the fourth is Spa, but you know, I've learned a lot and had better hopes for the year, but we live and we learn and we push on, so yeah. And obviously getting that good result at Spa after what happened at Spa, you know, last year with yeah. your accident was, was probably like, you know, closing that chapter and getting a bit of, uh, getting your own back on Spa maybe. Actually, I made a pass around the same corner, Blanchemont, around the outside. So I really defeated the beast there because it was a 47G impact. So yeah, yeah, not what you want at all. And it's you know, obviously great that you came out of that relatively yeah. okay. What's your plan for next year? Do you have anything in the works? You know where you want to be? It's the kind of time of year where yeah. people are looking. Uh, I think definitely going to go back to the States, um, have a lot more opportunities out there and a clear path to go. Not really sure what I'll do, but to the back to the States, I will. Okay, well, look, it's been great having you here in the UK for two years and uh, we'll keenly watch on as you uh, take on your racing career in the States. Thank you, thank you. Okay.
well to Leicestershire and just about at the Derbyshire border as we head to the 2.5 mile circuit of Donington Park. It was opened back in 1931 and is one of the oldest circuits in Europe. It is the oldest circuit in the United Kingdom still in use. An absolutely fantastic venue full of history and full of challenging corners. Big overtaking opportunities in the likes of Redgate, McLean's, Coppice, the Fogger ES, Goddard's etc and of course for the brave down into the old hairpin. The Wheatcroft State is the start finish straight up towards Redgate and then down this enormous hill 2.5 miles in length but so much elevation you get a real good look of it here as we come down the hill through the craners through the old hairpin and then we begin that climb all the way up through Starkey's Bridge Schwartz Curve up towards McLean's it is a fantastic circuit for racing and certainly one that will challenge all of our drivers this weekend Well, I'm here at Fortech with Edward Pearson. The first thing I have to say is happy birthday. How old were you yesterday? That's Friday. Yes, I was 17. Yeah, wow. I can't really believe it. I mean, oh. you got a provisional yet? No, I um, ordered it too late. So standard procedure. I ordered it last week. Should have ordered it about two months ago, but you know, rookie error, as yeah. we know. But. Come on, mate, you're too busy focusing on racing cars. Yeah. You're definitely not allowed to take on the road. Um, a decent race for you in race one. You made up a lot of places. Yeah, no, I think the car was really good. I think we struggled in quality. I think mainly, mainly me. I don't think having practice yesterday made us you know, a bit on the back foot, but I think we collected ourselves really well after quali, after a really tough quali. And I think, to be honest, if we'd gone again, I think we could have done some more. So no, really happy. What do you make of the conditions? Are they conditions you like racing in when it's maybe too dry for wets and too wet for slicks? I probably prefer racing in these conditions because I think other drivers sort of take their time a bit, but I just, when you're starting that far behind, I can't really go backwards, can I? So I sort of just go bang. And that's what I think we did in that race. When you look back at this season, which I can't believe is already finished, I mean, what's what's been a highlight for you? Because it feels like you've always had more potential than perhaps has, has been able to, you know, show itself on track. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think Spa was a big one for us where we actually showed our potential. Um, and I think we could show it in the rest of the races this weekend. I mean, there's still time left. But um, no, I can't believe it's the end of the championship. But I hope next year we can just do Spa, but every weekend and we can just be out on it. And I, I think we will be eight rounds of spa that's what we want <laughs> obviously with it being your birthday on the friday i guess you haven't celebrated too much now you know is there a celebration plan for the end of the weekend uh yeah i think i think we're thinking about it i think i might have a little party on monday maybe okay lovely stuff there's a great mini golf course in the center of nottingham that i know a lot of teams went to when we had friday cancelled so just a suggestion if you're still in the local area oh, i'll think about it <laughs> okay nice one uh, well if we don't speak to you again this season it's been great having you here and we'll, we'll look forward to more in the future thank you very much on board with Callum Boys and then to take a look around the Donington Park circuit. Of course, the Grand Prix layout up towards Turn 1 at Redgate. 540 metres out of Goddard's, uh, we reached that first braking zone, being very careful. Uh, got to pull it back over to the right-hand side, but of course, in these tricky, wet conditions, it is a difficult one. On the run down the hill, going through Hollywood into the Craner Curve. About 700 metres from T1 all the way down into the old hairpin. Incredibly fast, D drop down a, a gear or two in these conditions, certainly two, uh, before you wrestle the car all the way through. Got to watch out for going too wide though uh, the, the curve generally will be slippery on the outside the head up through uh, where Starkey's Bridge used to be up through the Schwanz curve and then into McLean's good overtaking opportunity here for the Brave you can get it to the inside but you have to be bold and you have to be committed up towards Cop is a blind right hander as you go up and over the crest watch out find the apex let the car kind of wander over to the left hand side of the circuit before we head out uh, onto Starkey straight about 600 metres before we get into the braking zone at the Fogarty S yes, and then take your uh, take a deep breath and fully commit through this one all the way through using the curb on the left curb on the right watching out for those sausage curves as well not to uh, not to overdo the car not to overspin it as we head down the hill then into the melbourne hairpin it is steeper than it looks uh, but it's kind of almost like a double apex uh, hairpin you really want to go and find that last one to get a good straight drive uh, down towards the final corner at goddard's pull it back over to the right hand side of the circuit before committing into the braking zone the circuit drops away very quickly almost blind completely into the corner through prepare for another lap and that is a look around Donington Park on board with Callum Voisin. Well, I'm here at Fortec now. The uh, the weather is not, I guess, what you guys are used to coming from pretty warmer climates. Jared, you had a good race yesterday, uh, you know, making up a few places there. And, you know, it feels like you've had a sort of up and down year. Sometimes the car's clicking, you're clicking with the car, and sometimes it's just not going your way. What do you want to do to finish this season on a high? 
Yeah, like you say, this year has been one of those years where, you know, nothing can just align properly. You know, we've just had bad results and some things where we're doing well and then we have a little, some other issues. But yeah, this weekend, we just, my goal is just to end it off as a high. You know, it's been one of those years where I think if we can just send it off, you know, pretty well, then I'd be pretty happy and, you know, move on and start preparing for, for next year. Yeah, I feel that when you came into GB4, you picked that up really, really quickly. And I guess you can't do that every year. It was, uh, you know, really good to see you get to grips with GB4. And GB3 is a completely different beast. Is GB3 you're going to something you're going to continue with next year? I mean, what's your plan? Uh, at the moment, we have no clue. Uh, we still have a lot of options. Obviously, I did a race in Valencia and GT, and that kind of opened a lot of doors. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of interest in doing GB3 again. I think if we do, we'll obviously I've had a year experience, which is really good. So I think if we do do it again, it will be off to a good start. Excellent. Well, I know you've got a lot of family here cheering you on this weekend, and it's great to see a lot of them coming over. Max Esterson, your dad is always here, and we always have a good chat. Is he here this weekend hanging out with you? No, he's actually at Brands Hatch. My brother's racing in the Formula Ford Festival. So, okay. so split loyalties. He's got to go and watch your brother. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit more fun of a race, the festival. So, Who's the fastest driver of you and your brother out of interest? Uh, well, the results today would show me so far. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, how do you feel this weekend's going already? I know you didn't make up any places, but to keep the car on the track and not have any incidents, given that race was a little bit chaotic, the first race of the weekend was, was decent. Yeah, it was actually pretty good, I think, in qualifying. Like, we've really struggled kind of the last, I don't know, four races. So, uh, to put it sixth, and I felt like, you know, like the pole was actually within reach. It was, it was close. Um, and third for the race tomorrow. So it's kind of our best quality of the year. So, it was a good step and a good way to finish it off. Yeah, it's been a season that's gone really, really quickly, but obviously you did a bit of FIA F3 as well, and that's another car to learn. Is that something that you've you've found easy to switch between the two different cars and different championships, or is it you know quite a lot for a, you know, a driver in your position? Uh, I think it's hurt me a bit in the dry in this car, to be honest. Um, switching between the two, it's it's a lot. I mean, it's they're, they're completely different. So, uh, But, I mean, in the wet, I've been quite quick in this car at least, but in the dry, I think... I don't know, it's hard to switch when I've been driving F3 and GP3 and then to come to this and the braking's completely different. It's it's hard to get it right in the dry. Yeah. Okay, well obviously I asked Jared what his plans are for next year. I guess you're gonna give me a similar answer that you're not too sure right now, but options on the table, things out there? I think uh, F3 is possible, so that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. Awesome. Well, it's been great if you do uh, only finish your GB3 career this weekend here. It's been great to have you with us and we'll look forward to following your career. Thanks. Donington decider this has been so dramatic over the season and it is building up as I said yesterday to quite a crescendo the title could be decided in just this race if you were watching the pre-show you'll know what Callum Voiser needs to do if he wins the race and Dunn is third then the championship is over Callum Voisin will take the title but if Callum Voisin has Alex Dunn directly behind him Maybe Dunn can sneak his way past as well, and I'm sure he'll go as hard as he can into that first corner. Then maybe the title is uh, is a bit more on going into that final race. Uh, of course, you can see here they're going out onto the formation lap. Uh, to give you a bit of an update as well, we will have two formation laps here, and the race will be slightly shorter. We'll take a look at the starting grip for this one. The top two in the championship starting first and second. Callum Voisin on pole position once again in GB3, the 11th time he's been doing so. And Alex Dunn will be starting alongside in his high-tech Pulse 8. He needs Needs to finish ahead of Callum Foyzen if he is to go after the title, but it's going to be a tall order. The rest of the grid, though, Max Edison, his best qualifying of the year, will start from third. Mackenzie Cresswell, after drama yesterday being sent off by Joseph Loke, will start this one from fourth position as he searches for another podium. James Headley starting inside the top.
top five with Suta Arau uh, looking much stronger towards the end of the season as he was at the start. Starting this one from sixth place. Let me get Matthew Rees and Joseph Loke. Loke very much an outsider now for the championship, but still there is the potential and maybe we can see him fighting for that title. We'll start alongside his teammate, but with a lot of work to do. Uh, moving a bit further down the order uh, as well in ninth position, Arthur Rojon, Jared Oberski was catching up with his parents yesterday who were uh, saying it's always so cold when they come to England. Uh, of course, Dominic Kiharczyk will start from 11th position after receiving a penalty. Uh, three places, he'll drop down to 11th. Oliver Stewart in 12th place uh, for the Elite Motorsports car, of course, uh, got involved in an instant late on yesterday. John Bennett will start from 13th. David Morales uh, from 14th position uh, in, the, uh, in the JHR car. Of course, Noah Ping in 15th position with Daniel Mavley atop starting from 16th. He had a lot of drama yesterday, went wide at the old hairpin, got a lot of grass in his car. Hopefully he's looking for a stronger race in this one, but it is still going to be tricky conditions out there. Nico Chris Dooley from 17th. Gerard Shea will start his way from 18th position as we roll down to the final uh, positions on the, uh, the grid. We've got two more rows to go. Uh, Pat Hoytzenroder will start from 19th position with Michael Shin in a 20th. He will be starting uh, quite high up in the next race. Hoytzenroder will start from the reverse grid pole uh, later on this afternoon. Ed Pearson and Costa Taparis starting uh, as the final two cars on the grid. Uh, obviously, it's myself, Liz McGlade, Max Maserati in the commentary booth. And uh, Max, whilst they're going out for another formation, obviously, uh, as I said before, there's two of them. It's kind of tricky out there. It's it's kind of it's not warm. It's quite cold. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah, I think the actual cold air is actually more of an issue than the track at the minute. The track is drier than it was where we left it with the last GB4 race yesterday. So it's more getting heat in the tyres just due to the cold nature of what it's like outside at the minute. It is freezing. You know, it's October. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, we, we kind of said this before. Um, yeah, about how the uh, the tyres and such work. Obviously, they have uh, two complete sets, so eight tyres in total uh, in this, and so they can chop and change that as they see fit. Uh, and it was under the guidance of Pirelli, who said you should probably do two formation laps. And uh, of course, uh, when when you when your your tyre supplier is like, yeah, I mean, you probably want a bit more heat in your tyres. Uh, obviously, that is going to eat into the race distance. So we will go for an 18-minute race, not a 20-minute uh, race, or 13 laps rather than 14, basically. Music to Callum's ears, I think. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Callum's going to settle this one in this race, or do you think we're going to need another one? Do you think we're going to need that third? Oh, it's so so hard to tell. I think it's great that we've got. I think it's Callum. Is it alongside? Dunn uh, Dun, Dun, Dun alongside, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so on pole, Dunn's there as well. Dunn's there to make something happen, so it, it, I think a lot of this race is going to come off the start, and that could be a massively deciding thing if we then go into it in the last race or not. Yeah, so I was talking to uh, to a few people before this, and I'm going to say this on broadcast, I'm always going to put my neck on the line a little bit, is that um, I don't see Dunn finishing one position behind Callum Voisin. I either see him finishing ahead of Callum Voisin, or through Callum boys and <laughs> uh, well I wouldn't say through I was going to say um, a bit further behind maybe pushing a little bit too hard because to, at the moment Dunn sat there being like do you know what I'm sure he's not really super bothered as to whether he finishes second or third he's bothered about whether he wins the championship that's what he's focused on right now yeah exactly and so maybe uh, Alex will have to use some tactics of if he gets ahead backing him up um, can we see the track oh it's a bit wetter on Dunn's side that's not going to help him that's not going to help him off the line rather it looks like where Callum is, it's much drier. Yeah, of course, the pole position's got the inside line for turn one, but also, technically, it's on the racing line as you would come across uh, that side, and that's why it is drier where Callum Voisin is. So he should get a better launch. Obviously, we saw that yesterday. Uh, we were talking this it's one of his best drives yesterday where uh, what he got I know it was the late safety car but still it was an unreal performance uh, from the driver poised to potentially become the 2023 GB3 champion there's Costa Taparis and his road and Carlin uh, coming through the final corner looking to line up in that final grid spot uh, and put himself onto the uh, onto the grid and then we'll be able to get this race underway will it be Callum Voisin will it be Alex Dunn is the championship going to be decided in this race? Well, maybe we'll have it in about 20 minutes time. The lights come on, 13 laps onto the clock. Callum Voisin will start from pole position and we are underway. It is a better start from Callum Voisin though than Alex Dunn, but he has managed to keep close as they race their way down towards the first corner. Bunny of two and three ones. I think once again, no pigs on wide. Big lock up though for Callum Voisin going into the first corner. Is he going to run out wide? The answer is no. Voisin holds the uh, hole shot. Dunn actually had a really good start there. Even on the wetter side, he did have a slightly better launch, but then he just... It just didn't give them that next part, that next phase. Mm. Voice wants to hold air. They're all trying to avoid that wet, greasy part of the circuit. 
Yeah, there was uh, Arthur Rojon uh, that was going out a little bit wide. You've got James Headley as well here dropping back. You've got uh, Matthew Reese in that number five trying to go on the attack, trying to find his way through. This is back up towards the race lead. Ollie Stewart's had some issues uh, as he's crawling uh, down the Craner curves. It's very tight for the race lead. Of course, Dunn is not that far away from Voyager, but Max Esterson is trying to have a late surge here in the 2023 championship. It has not been a good one for the Fortec team, but they are turning that around courtesy of that third place start for, uh, for Max Esterson. And he's right on the back of on the back of him. I don't know what people have done with tyre pressures or but or if Whoa. He's, oh, good save to not have go off there and look they've all got down the inside since he's lost that momentum now through the chicane yeah it was suited around gone wide of course Mackenzie Cresswell's worked his way through James Headley's trying to get around the outside oh. big lockups there was a bit of contact as well from Suter around uh, I don't know who got into him uh, it was one of the Chris Dippman racing guys it might be Arthur Rojon if uh, but I don't want to uh, pull that one straight out that Max is trying all different lines here, trying to find a way past Alex. Alex is doing well to hang on to this at the minute. Yeah, he's doing very well. First lap complete, then Callum Voisin is leading. Alex Dunn, then Max Esserson, Matthew Reese, Mackenzie Cresswell, Headley, then Loke in seventh place uh, as into the pit lane. Uh, a couple of drivers come. Suter around having a couple of problems after some of that contact. Michael Shin has gone around the outside. The number 77 of David Morales, uh, the next one to try and work his way through. Ping also passed Suter around, despite having such good form and such good pace over the, uh, the last part of this season. That mistake going through the chicane seems to have put him right on the back foot and it's not getting any better no i mean these cars are so momentum based that you lose a bit of momentum like that and everyone's so tight in this championship together that you just end up dropping like a stone through the field you know then you're on the wrong line again trying to defend and someone else is coming around your outside as we see someone getting up the inside of daniel mapletov there let's do luke making his way up the order uh, and of course you've got john bennett uh, behind who uh, hasn't I don't think has quite fit uh, into Rodin Carlin uh, uh, quite as well as we would have we would have hoped yeah especially based on last year especially based on how he was back in Silverstone uh, the first time we went there earlier on in the year he, he absolutely gelled with the squad then uh, that is out of the way I believe uh, that will be um, Ollie Stewart struggling his way around uh, and of course it was Arthur Rojon into the pit lane uh, as well Pat Hoytson I think had a couple of problems might have been the car also coming into the pit lane later down the order there's John Bennett looking down the inside of the 99 of Mavliotov uh, having two cars with these bright yellow yellow bright uh, almost like green highlights on them right next to each other is very distracting as Costa Taparas is working his way through yep the two Carlins are ending up battling here rather than kind of working together to get through the field that's a little bit of breathing space for for Daniel now who can just get his head down and put in some times again this is what's going to start getting more and more difficult with the dirty air now OK, we're going to simplify things as well, championship-wise, because we know a lot of you are sat on the edge of your seat wondering what's happened. Actually, so let's see this from Suta Aral first. So he's gone out wide. He's taken some of those blue curves, which is like, you can't use. For one, they're a lot higher. Or they they, uh, they seem to fire the car up a little bit more, and it's not a part of the racing service anyway. Um, so that's pushed him out wide and allowed Mackenzie Cresswell to work his way through. As I was going to say, if things finish as they stand, Callum Voigt isn't in first and Alex Dunn in second, Whilst the championship will be very much in favour of Callum Voisin, and I would say it would be one hand and, uh, and four extra fingers on the other, it would not be done. We would need the third race to decide this championship. If anything happens to Dunn, if maybe Max Esterson brings his way back into this, that could sort the title. But for us, uh, you know, kind of on the edge of our seat, we're kind of like, ooh, actually, do you know what? If Alex Dunn could get past Callum Voisin, maybe we've got a bit of a fight on here. Very, very good from that. I mean, you can see how hard Dunn is pushing. This isn't for a lack of trying if he ends up finishing second in this race. That chicane was amazing, watching him dart the car through there in the dirty air of Callum. Both of them ragging everything they can out of it time-wise to try and you know either hold or attack this lead. Well, I'll say, though, who's going fastest right now is actually Matthew Reese, who has just gone about three tenths faster, a quarter of a second faster than our race leader. So Matthew Reese is the one uh, firing all cylinder there. Suter Arau feeling the pressure from Chris Tadulu. This is about for 13th position for a driver who was starting uh, right the way up the order. He looks like a very much a top five driver uh, this round at Donington Park. Suter Arau is struggling to get back into the rhythm after that, uh, after that contact, after that moment going through the chicane as well. He's just not quite getting back into the rhythm. It's so hard to do so in GB3, though. It is, it is, because as well, he would have lost tyre temperature when he ran on that wet, so now it's yeah. having to build that back up. I think we can see Dunn closing in on Voison because it looks like the heat's now coming to his tyres and he's being able to, to push that little bit more. Certainly so. First sector came down another tenth of a second, so Dunn is closing back in on Voisin once more. Uh, three laps complete here. Donington decide a penultimate race of the 2023 championship as uh, we look further down the order. This battle for 13th position, Suter Aral versus Chris Dudulu once again. Uh, car off the line there. Uh, I believe that is still Ollie Stewart, who is uh, still struggling around the circuit, trying to find uh, what, uh, what's wrong with the car. I mean, to be fair, it makes sense if you... Uh, it's the only time that you're going to be running this car before the final race. 
race. So if you do have any problems with the car, you kind of got to sort it out in this session uh, before uh, before the reverse grid race, where, to be fair, Ollie Stewart might have a decent chance of taking some decent points. Exactly. It's what is so great having that reverse grid race. It, it gives you another another shot if you ended up having not the best qualifying. But again, look, done, he looks closer. He is. Yeah. Uh, it's, look at that. And with faster slap of the race. Certainly so. So Alex Dunn is flying right now. That was about quarter of a second faster than Callum Voisin. I did say when we were on that formation lap, I, uh, w with Alex Dunn, I either see him finishing a few places behind Callum Voisin or ahead of. And what I mean by that is Alex Dunn is going to leave absolutely nothing on the table in his pursuit of his fifth victory of his campaign. He's got. He's just got to leave ball out there again. Really nice line into that corner, trying to tuck the front wing in a little bit to what Callum's doing, just to give himself that little bit of free air. Again, that really good exit it looks there. Again, it's visibly closer, and we saw that Callum had a bit of a lock up last lap into the hairpin. You know, a mistake like that again could just allow Dunn to have a, a sniff at going for it into the last corner. Yeah, if you're not on the edge of your seat, well, uh, I don't know what else you need. We are stood up here in the comms box, and this is about to get very exciting indeed. The top two in the championship, unfortunately, they're not really joined by Loke, who's just uh, struggled a little bit in qualifying, hasn't really found his form uh, around Donington Park. But to be fair, he's had an unbelievable season, has Joseph Loke. Uh, uh, just not quite there when it needed to be. It is these two for the championship right now, unless there is further drama. And hey, this is the GB3 championship. Do not rule out further drama. We have no idea uh, what could possibly happen. But as we uh, complete yet another lap, uh, it is Voice in leading from Dunn, from Esterson, from Reese, Cresswell, Headley, Kuharchik, Loke, Waberski, and Shin, the top 10. And another faster slap again from Alex Dunn within half a second now. You know, this is where it gets really tricky now in the dirty air. It's not as almost easy to make those gains as it was when he was, you know, a second back to when he's now within half a second. But if he just keeps that pressure on, you know, he's filling Callum's, Callum's mirrors here. You know, Callum can see the championship and he can see where he can lose it at the minute. I just I can only imagine how much his heart is racing. The pair of these two, how much their hearts are racing in their, in their cockpits. Uh, because right now, I mean, just look at the pace they've got over the rest of the field. Uh, you know, they, they, they've pulled out two seconds over Max Esterson. Uh, they're comfortably clear of Matt Reese. Uh, Mackenzie Cresswell has had unbelievable performances in qualifying and in the podiums. Look at how much Alex Dunn is committed through that chicane. These two, both of them, are fully, fully committed. Because Alex Dunn, lock uh, up, big lock up. Oh, he is a big lock-up. That has opened the door for Alex Dunn to work his way through. Callum Voisin, though, still able to hang on to the race lead. This is going to come down to the final corner. Alex oh. Dunn switching it back, coming down the inside. He's going to try and commit They're for it. Touch. There's going to be a little bit of contact between the pair of them. Alex Dunn, who's head up to the front of the field. Callum Voisin drops down to second. Dunn did it. I think that was just on the limit there. It was fair. There was a bit of wheel banging, wheel to wheel, but it wasn't. didn't hamper either of them too much there. Um, good racing, really. Good, you know, this is championship deciding yeah I mean I will say with these two lights I was going to say Callum Voisin does not want to finish behind uh, Alex Dunn really here because uh, for one that points back gap will close up a little bit but you don't want to take it down into that third race you really want to deal with it as, as near as makes a difference in this one let's take a look at a replay and talk us through this one just an amazing he, he you know he really made it look like he was going to go to the outside selling that dummy and then just swapped it to the inside where it, you know that's very brave to do when it's as wet as it was on that inside. You know, that was big chance of him understeering more and actually having them both properly up there rather than uh, the little wheel bang they had mid-corner. Um, I would have expected him to go around the outside or cut back, which I think Callum was as well. Yeah, uh, and I know there might be some of the talks of, uh, of course, um, uh, back in the previous round. Callum Voisin obviously made uh, quite an aggressive move on Joseph Lowe going into the uh, into the hairpin to turn three at Zanvo, uh, and he breached track limits and then got a penalty for it. That is not the same as what we've just seen there from Dunn. I would say, like you say, it's just about on the line, but especially considering some of the things that we've seen from race control uh, out from yesterday, I, I suspect there's not really going to be anything uh, anything further from that. This guy, though, uh, flying at the moment. Look at the fastest lap that he set. He's charged his way up the order. That has just switched over to Dunn. Yeah, I mean, and he's doing that coming through traffic as well. Um, really good pace from Kucharczyk. We've seen that a lot through the year. He's been very, he's very young, but he's very, very fast. And, you know, sometimes he's right at the top with these guys, and sometimes it hasn't really worked out for him in qualifying, but his pace has always been there.
Wow. Uh, so I just, it's, it's really dawning on me about how much this is going to move on to the final race. We are going to need that showdown. This is a full-on Donington decider for the championship. Dunn pulling away 22.890 on the previous lap. That is super, super fast. Uh, yeah, when you consider the likes of Reese just set a personal best at a 23.1. Uh, Kuharchik did a 23.1 on the previous one. His previous best was a 23.0. Uh, it is very fast from Dunn right now, and I suspect that Camavoisin doesn't really have an answer for that one uh, at the moment as uh, they cross the line uh, there'll be five laps left to go in this one and uh, yeah Dunn is starting to look very much in control it does but you know Cam's got to think that he really hasn't got the pace to, to get after Dunn and get back at him he's got to secure second because it's still going to be enough points that he can still you know he's still very much on his way he's still got that one hand on the trophy going into the final round if he comes second here to, to Dunn's win. He can't drop back more, though. He can't then suddenly make a mistake now trying to chase after him and drop behind Max or Reese. He's got to keep exactly where he is, keep what he's been doing all year and keep that consistency. Yeah, uh, as things uh, stand, uh, if we roll into that final race, Joseph Lowe will be outside of championship contention. We kind of were expecting that one anyway in this one. That's fine. The top two would be separated by 22 points going into that final race. Uh, I, I'm not going to talk about the championship permutations going into that one because it is so complicated courtesy of the points you gain from gaining positions. It's almost not worth going into. Uh, all I'll tell you is that if you are going to join us for that season finale a little bit later on, I will be updating you on the points as much as I can throughout the race because that is going to be a thrilling climax to the championship and Alex Dunn is the driver that has gained the most points from gaining uh, positions in a reverse grid he has done that more than anyone else so I don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dunn in that one no no but it's 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 a big gap he still has to make Very. up for that final one so I'd say Callum's just got to keep his head here you know consistency will pay off like yes it would have been great to get this win and to have it almost in the bag, you know, basically going into the final round. But it's still looking very, very good for him. And you got to, you know, commend the both of them with, you know, the racing that we just saw there. That was that was top single-seater feeder series, you know, racing. And the penultimate round to be banging wheels, fighting for a championship, it doesn't get more exciting than that. Again, that that is the exact move we were expected to see from, uh, from Alex Dunn. We look back, though, in the battle for the podium. You've got Max Esterson here in that number 42. You've got Matthew Reese, the JHR Developments car. You've got uh, Mackenzie Cresswell as well, searching for yet another podium. It would be his uh, his seventh one in the, uh, in the final four weekends of the year, which to have that consistency is insane yeah yeah it is <laughs> it, it really is um and it's what you know delivers big results and big championship positions at the end of the day you, you know it's how you keep in the fight uh, and max esterson by the way he's looking for his first podium of the uh, of the season as well so there's kind of almost more on for it i do remember he went well round here last year uh, kind of uh, obviously the first round last year he, he almost like, struggled a little bit and then uh, as soon as he went to Donington park he just switched it on to be fair so did callum voisin uh, that time and we've seen a very different callum voisin ever since obviously he stayed with the carlin team max esterson uh, has moved from douglas over to fortec uh, and you know it's uh, he, he's shown himself a position he, he and uh, waberski uh, have been great of course their uh, team mate Pearson's kind of struggled a little bit more uh, in that car but uh, I think you know Fortec have had their problems this year but they are showing again that extra form still no move from Kuharchek trying to get past Headley though yeah Headley's doing really well he's just you know he, I don't think I've actually seen him defend yet he's just been holding his line the whole race and letting the dirty air do the work for him and that's just not allowed Kuharchek to to get enough of a toe to be able to actually make a move because he's always struggling with the dirty air in the corners yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's just not... Uh, it, I mean, this circuit, is, as I know you know from, from GB4, it's not the easiest circuit to make uh, overtakes at. Uh, and, uh, of course, these cars are even harder to overtake than they are in GB4. So it's, and especially in the condition now, you go offline, it's kind of damp still. Exactly, yeah. So it's even more tricky than it was. Um, especially, like, the run out of Old Hepburn, for example, trying to get on the inside or the outside coming into McLean's. That's always a good opportunity. Well, that was a bit wide from, from James there, I think just in track limits but yeah it's it's you know even coming down into here into the chicane where maybe you could throw one up the inside or something not in these cars but more likely with the fours you just can't do it because look how wet it is as you get closer and closer to the braking zone 
Well, we've got two more laps left to go. Two more laps for Alex Dunn to uh, to pull out even more of a margin, uh, which he presently holds at 2.4 seconds. He is running away uh, with this one. But two more laps for anyone to find out uh, whether they've got anything to uh, to make a move. Got a couple of close battles on the road. Of course, you've still got uh, uh, Cresswell on the back end of Reese. You've still got this one uh, as uh, Headley's closing back in on Cresswell. Kuharczyk, who's kind of dropped off the rear end. Uh, Loke is comfortable clear of, uh, of Waberski. Uh, Shin's kind of driving around by himself at this point. Yeah. Um, it, for, for quite a lot of drivers, especially when they're in you know, decent positions in the championship, it might be, do you know what? I'm not going to take any risk. I'm just going to hold on to this position, make sure that the car is okay. Because let's be honest, you, you can't afford to uh, to damage the car really at this point because this, the, the final race of the season isn't that far away. Suter Rao is trying to battle it out with Noah Ping here. And that's going to get very close on the exit. Really good from both of them to hold the room. Someone went off in the gravel there just behind them. He managed to keep it on the road, though. Side by side through Craners. Wow. Oh, it's going to get onto the wet. Going to get onto the wet for Krishna Dulu. He's going to... Wow, that was a really good drive from the both of them to actually avoid... Oh. oh you can Arah had to go a bit wide there just to avoid the oversteering Krista Dulu, and that's allowed. Who is that? Is that no, no, it was, it was Ping. He was trying to get past. It was Krista Dulu oh, who was okay. the one behind. Uh, Krista Dulu, by the way, look at that. The amount of grass on the on his on the, on the left hand side. So it's on the right uh, intake, the right side pod. The amount of grass is in there as the two Rodin Carlins uh, battle it out here. This is, uh, of course, John Bennett, who's lost out now to Costa de Paris. Gets the up and under on the race down towards the Vogue. Yes. Is he I think he's just going to stay ahead and now of course as it gets wetter he can move over because you, you just won't want to send it up the inside here. There he goes. Gonna, they're going to still be side by side I think by the time they get to the hairpin. They're going to have the run. You can see in the background. Here they come into the corner. That's it. Be careful on the wet. He's gonna, there you go. There's the lock up. Allowed him through. That's what happens when you get on the wet here. Look, he's going to drop one, maybe two places now because of that. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunately predictable. Costa to Paris then dropping back behind John Bennett in that uh, number 27, the uh, Dayglo yellow, uh, and Ed Pearson in that Fortec, the white and red car with the blue highlights working their way through. Final lap then in the penultimate race of the championship. And uh, at the moment, things seem set for the race lead. Everywhere else, though, the doors are open. The positions are there. There is Alex Dyle. I mean, talk about this performance so far. So impressive to have made that move. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's pulling away. Wonder how what uh, Dunn and Voisin will think about that move post-race. Uh, Dunn, I think, will think that was fair. That was perfectly on. And Callum will be like, can we protest it? <laughs> um, you know, just to make sure we can have those points. That's what I'd do if I was in that position. You know, yeah. whatever you can do, you got to do. Um, but Alex, I think, has done everything he needed to in this race. You know, it was so... He started on the wet side of the, grip, the grid, still had a good launch, then was, you know... Dropped back a bit, seemed like his tyres just weren't then. And once they came in, faster snap after faster snap after faster snap, doing an extremely impressive move to take the lead and win this race. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. So Alex Dunn then, for the fifth time in 2023, will bring his high-tech Pulse 8 car over the line first, but it's the first time he's done it in the United Kingdom. Callum Voisin will come across the line in second place, and Max Esterson, for the first time this year, will take to the podium. An unbelievable performance from the top two in the championship, and it's not done behind. Ed Pearson and Gerard Shea will fight this one out as Pearson squeezes Shea off the road. That is a bit dicey indeed. Yeah, perfectly think I think that's fine again though you just when you're on the outside you're on the outside you know it's it's the risk of it uh, on the last lap of the race, by the way, I did just notice Alex Dunn set the fastest lap of the race. Uh, and not by a small margin, it was by almost half a second. That is very impressive. That's scary pace, isn't it, for coming into the race three. If they've got that pace in the dry and they've got that over the closest guys to them, if Dunn can have a good start and start getting through early on when it's a bit chaotic and he's got half a second over the nearest competitor, you know, to all the other ones, he's going to really start coming through quickly. So I think this start of the race three is going to be extremely crucial to decide this championship. The only thing that I can kind of think was, is that, do, do you think there's any uh, uh, avoids in maybe looking after his tyres in there? You obviously, you know, they've, they only, as we said before, they only get eight tyres, they only get uh, uh, you know, two full sets. Is there a bit of that in there? Potentially, but I just think he would have gone all Alec for this race because if he'd done that, it just makes his life so much easier for race three. You know, he puts Alex in a really, really chokehold position of there of there's there's not much he could have done, you know, in terms of gaining that position's back. But now it's given done that bit of a lifeline.
Maybe so. Well, there is the provisional race results then. Alex Dunn taking the victory for the fifth time this year. Callum Voigt in second. Yet another podium for him. Max Esterson on the podium for the first time in 2023. Then we get Reese. Then we get Cresswell, fourth and fifth. Of course, Headley in sixth place. Q Hardchick working his way up from outside the top ten into seventh place uh, and set the second fastest lap of the race. So uh, pretty impressive from him. Joseph Loke down the order in eighth, removes himself from championship contention uh, before we got Waberski and Morales. Uh, then we have Ping, Chris Dulu, Suta Arau. Uh, big shame for him. Uh, Daniel Mav top into 14th, one of his best performances in a uh, in a standard uh, race from uh, from qualifying. Uh, John Bennett down the order, Costa Paris, uh, he had a lot of race-long battle with. Uh, then Ed Pearson, Hoytson Roder will finish in 18th position. Gerard Shea and Michael Shin inside the uh, the top 20 uh, with our final two runners. Uh, Ollie Stewart having lots of drama early doors. We didn't see really what happened with Arthur Rosian. I think it might have been contact between himself and Suta Arau. He brought it back into pit lane uh, in that race. But... Uh, yeah, big drama. We've got a championship to deal with. There is Alex Dunn out of the car. Handshake between himself and Callum Foyzin. I think that's rightfully so. That is exactly what we like to see. The camaraderie, the respect between them. Max Esterson, of course, uh, gets along well. And, uh, yeah, we'll see all of them being handed out the caps. Uh, almost ready for an interview with Jonas. I wonder what he's going to ask. I wonder what the mentality is like for Alex Dunn, because he seemed a little dejected uh, yesterday, courtesy of the safety cars that we had intervening with the race. And... Uh, I think he'll probably be a little happier, although yeah, I'm not sure he looks super pleased. <laughs> but I think like with the, sh the handshake from Callum, I don't know what was said between them, but it definitely looks sportsmanship. It looked like Callum understands the move and thinks it was fair himself, otherwise I don't think he would have done that. No. Um, but very good sportsmanship from the both of them there. You know, it's what you like to see in this when, it, when two championship contenders are fighting so hard. It's good to see that bit of sportsmanship between them. Yeah, you can see Callum Voigt in there who's also over to have a little chat with the Road and Carlin crew. Uh, yeah, I know uh, Lavis Mechanics over there, Tom Wallace, uh, etc. They will all, all be over there having a quick chat with them, having a, almost like that that brief debrief, so to speak. Yeah, you know, it, it's just that quick. What, what actually happened in that race? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, basically, yeah, it's like a quick like, how does the car feel? You know, yeah. like so you can already start on basically looking towards the next one, but. Yeah, Alex doesn't look too pleased, does he? I don't... I don't is, it maybe, is that not the Irishman in him? Maybe he's just, he thinks it's not over yet. And I, there's that, like, there's yeah, still a race to go. I still, I still haven't won it. You know, like, I've still got a lot to do. I've done everything I need to do. But oh, that was a very small smile there. He, I, I mean, to be fair, imagine the pressure. You know, when you're fighting for a championship with this, you know you've got a lot of work to do. I, I think, to be fair, if we could run race three literally now he'd be like let's go i want to get straight in the car i want to deal with this no smiling until it's over yeah yeah i ag agree that you know he's got like what was it four or five hours or so now till the maybe a bit less than that till the the next race um it's there's a lot of intensity there is a lot of pressure you won't want to eat but he's got to eat <laughs> um you won't want to have lunch you just won't be hungry but you know you've got you've got to keep yourself going yeah keep certainly, the energy. Certainly. certainly so i'm not sure uh as to whether we can jump down to Jonas. I am being told we can, so thankfully Jonas can catch up with Alex Dunn. Well, Alex, you had to finish ahead of Callum Voice in there, and that's what you did, some excellent racing. You must uh, be, be over the moon to take this to the final race. Um, yeah, you know, I think it's probably the only race win I've had this year where I'm not happy, um, you know, of course. I, I try my best, I, I had to try. Um, I don't know what the points is looking like now. I think winning it is gonna be difficult. Um, but yeah, I had to try. Look, you've given yourself every chance and it will go down to that final race. Talk me through the move though that got you past Callum. Yeah, I think um, Callum, Callum made a mistake and made a lock up, but there was a really small gap going into the last corner and I just put my car there. Um, you know, I think I knew that I had to try um, and if Callum won the race, it was pretty much, there was no, no, no chance of me winning it in the last race. So I had to try and, and I did and, and I'm glad it paid off. It was a very brave move, but you obviously had more pace than him. But I guess you, you have to make sure that, you know, you finish the race and you, you do get on the podium because it would really have been all or nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, to be honest, that was my, that was my attitude. Um, you know, I had to go for the win. Um, I wasn't going to do anything silly, but if the opportunity was there, I was going to take it with both hands. Um, I knew the pace was strong. I think throughout the year, we've always had um, a better race car than quality car. Um, our, our race pace has always been super good. So I'm glad we, we got to show that in the UK as well. I was going to say that you've actually won a race in the UK. I mean, you couldn't finish the season 
without winning at least one in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Alex, congratulations. Uh, race winner Alex Dunn with High Tech Pulse 8. Let me find Callum Voice and we'll come over here and uh, see him chatting to his team. Callum, so uh, you started on pole position and uh, it was all down to that move there from Alex. Do you think it was a fair move? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think, you know, it, it was a, definitely a risky move, but, you know, he had to do it because obviously got a deficit in the championship. So, um, look, I mean, it was it was bold, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I've got to see on the video. I don't really know what happened because obviously I don't know whether it was wet or offline or anything like that. Obviously it was. If it was, then maybe I've got, you know, something to, to, to argue about. But uh, no, I mean, initially I'd say it was fine. So, uh, no, I was still happy with the P2. Obviously we struggled a little bit, just mostly on the brakes. Um, obviously I locked up into the first F in, which is why I got in that position in the first place. So, no, my fault, but um, it's all right. We've got, we've got another race to go. We're still in the lead by, uh, you know, a decent amount. So. Yeah, it's the place you want to be, isn't it? Because you, you want to be going into that race uh, winning. And to be honest, you know, you did well to hold him off there because I think it was quite clear he had a bit better pace. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, we struggled quite a bit, to be honest. The first two laps were amazing. We pulled a really good gap, and then um, but then the tyres just started to drop off way too much. So I think it was probably a bit drier than we thought, um, or even hotter. It's actually relatively warm. So, uh, no, but, uh, you know, minimise the damage, and, uh, yeah, still P2 is good. So. Yeah, it all goes down to that final race. Callum, uh, thank you very much. We'll let you get your trophy. Callum Voicen uh, with Ronan Carlin and Max Esterson. You know, great to see you back on the podium after you know a, a little while away and, and putting in some great performances and had some good uh, good pace out there. Yeah, it's been a while um, <laughs> since last year I was on the podium, but yeah, it's good to be back. Had a really good start and was really quick on the first lap, probably quicker than the than the first two. So, uh, but struggled a bit in the middle and had to hold off Reese, but it was okay. I was I was good in sector three, which is important, so you couldn't really get too close uh, to make a move in the hairpin. So yeah, it was okay. It's nice to be back. Yeah, it's nice for you to be back here and as you say it's been a long time so we'll let you go and get your trophy now thank you very much Max Esterson uh, with 4Tech and that is the penultimate race of the season it all goes down to the final reverse grid race which is coming up later on we'll talk you through that and speak to some of the other drivers after we see these drivers get their trophies on the podium yeah I think that was uh, nice to hear from uh, from Callum Voisin basically saying yeah I mean obviously we're going to check it post race but uh, realistically speaking being like it's almost seemed like it was a fairly uh, fairly fair move, uh, which uh, is uh, yeah, just a, a bit dicey. As uh, so we'll see them climb their way onto the uh, onto the podium. Uh, as uh, again, once again, it's uh, it's just so interesting that it's been such a while since we've seen uh, Max Esterson onto the podium. Because he did get his first uh, podium last year around here. It was the third place, and that was in the first race uh, that we did last year. And then took a race win uh, straight after that. The only one he had uh, in his GB3 campaign. Uh, Callum Voyton, who's had two wins this year. Uh, on to the second step and Alex Dunn taking his fifth victory but interestingly again as we've said before is the international man of mystery it is the first time he has been victorious in the United Kingdom in the GB3 championship which is uh, obviously a weird one to say he's won four times two in Spa two in Zandvoort and now one in Donington as he eyes up a potential chase for the championship crown but it is not going to be easy uh, for him obviously them all getting uh, handed out all the podiums uh, all the trophies rather but it's it, like I say you you can't relax too much right now I mean even hearing Voisin and Dunn there you could you could hear they both still sound very um, uh, calm and, and sort of reserved and uh, not pushing things too far especially after what has been a crazy crazy race as we'll take a look at highlights Highlights from the penultimate race of the year is the race down towards the first quarter. It was Callum Boyson starting from pole position, but it was the charge from Alex Dunn behind. He was keeping things close into that first corner. A couple of squeezes off in the background, uh, including Noah Pink getting forced off a little bit by Dead Morales. Bit of a lock up there on the front right from Callum Boyson. He was still able to hang on to the race lead and everything much tidier uh, than it was the previous day when we were racing into uh, Redgate for the first time. A uh, couple of easy uh, lunges uh, and challenges down into the old hairpin, including that one from James Headley. Uh, squirreling down uh, into the old hairpin before managing to work his way through the corner. Alex Dunn was feeling the pressure early on from Max Esterson. Suta Araldo having a couple of problems going out wide uh, through the Fogger ES and then dropping his way down the order. This was about halfway through the race. A bit of a lock up there from Callum Boys and out wide he'd go. He was able to hang on for now from Alex Dunn, but then watch this. Over to the uh, right hand side of the track, then bang, straight down the inside, heading into that final corner. Bit of contact between the pair of them as Dunn got onto the, uh, the slightly wet to surface and into the race lead the high-tech pulsate driver would go battles are uh, plenty uh, down the order this one for 13th position as Suta Arau was uh, fighting with Noah Ping two drivers who we know have good pace know have top 10 pace around here 
big slide there from Noah Ping as uh, Suter Aral was forced to go wide and that would actually cost him the position to Chris Dulu as well. Alex Dunn was through the final corner though to take his fifth victory in 2023, taking top honours once more and closing down on the championship leader who finished in second ahead of Max Esterson. And of course, we'll look at the provisional championship standings. Uh, and with that race, I'll talk just a little bit about how uh, yeah, you can see the gap between the top two. It is now just them two in the championship. Callum Voice and 470 points, Alex Dunn 448. Uh, with Joseph Lake being 53 points back, he is no longer in championship contention. And to be fair, he's no longer uh, under pressure from Mackenzie Cresswell because he will be finishing in third position in 2023. So excellent job from Joseph Lake. Uh, Mackenzie Cresswell, though, still having a lot of work to fend off Matthew. Reese James Headley out of contention for fourth place, uh, but still could uh, could get himself inside the top five in the championship. Uh, as we work our way through, though, you've got Kuharczyk, you've got Chris Dooley, you've got Waberski, and you've got John Bennett heading into that final race, not separated by much, just seven points between them. But yes, it is 22 points between the top two going into one final race. Let's head down to John Jackson, though, who's in the paddock. A scintillating race in the GB3 Championship. Great to see our two title contenders fighting it out the front. It will all come down to that final race later on, the reverse grid race. We will also catch up with some of the other drivers shortly, but things come thick and fast here on the final day of the season. And we'll be back very, very shortly with the first race of the day in the GB4 Championship.
it's a cold morning here at Donington Park for the final two rounds, rounds 20 and 21 of the GB4 Championship. I'm John Jackson with our commentator Lewis McGlade alongside me. And we already crowned the champion at Grands Hatch last time out, Tom Mills, and also KMR Sport winning the team's championship. And Cooper Webster, after his victory yesterday, Lewis, is pretty much nailed on second place. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I don't actually see yeah, the, the, the top sort of three or four really changing in the championship. I think Colin Queen's fairly set where he is. McNeely's fairly set where he is. I think Cooper Webster is fairly set in that second position. The battle for fifth, though, is looking pretty tight there. Uh, you obviously got Kulkarni versus Burgoyne Jr. Those mm -hmm. set on basically the same points at the moment. Uh, but it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. I think they've just got to keep their noses really clean for the day. When we look back at the season, obviously Tom Mills has run away with this with 10 race wins, not racing this weekend even because the title's already wrapped up. When you look at the other drivers and you look at Colin Queen, you look at Cooper Webster and Liam McNeely, there's uh, there's not much difference between them. They're all fairly evenly matched and that's given us a good battle. I guess you could look at Tom and just say because he's a second year driver, he's had so much more time in the car. That's the thing that really has, has made the difference between him and them. I mean, you can see the learning throughout the season if you look at Liam McNeely, who started off the season really as the fourth fastest driver, whereas out there, to be honest, uh, yes, of course, without Tom Mills, uh, he's looking like the second fastest, maybe even the fastest driver, looking at how much he caught up to Cooper Webster yesterday. So there's there's a lot of uh, margin in there you know, to, to see that kind of learning. Tom Mills always came into this one as the favourite, the same way that Cooper Webster's come into this weekend as the favourite to, to take second and the favourite to basically win the most races weekend. That's kind of what we what we expect but especially him and McNeely have closed up a lot uh, and, and Colin Queen's not too far away it's just around here he seems to make too many mistakes yeah that's the kind of thing isn't it some drivers will have favorite tracks and some will have tracks they're maybe not so keen on uh, in a second we're going to talk about a huge moment yesterday for a guy that we've already spoken about on the live stream this weekend who's turned sim racing into his dream of getting onto the podium but first of all let's just look back at what happened in the first race of the weekend yesterday And highlights from the GB4, the first race of the weekend uh, here at the final round at Donington. It was a good start from Cooper Webster from that pole position, but it was a great one from the third row of the grid from Lucas Blakely, who uh, passed Ping, passed Queen, passed McNeely into the first corner after an unbelievable start straight around the outside. He would go uh, in tricky conditions, all of them on, sl on slick tyres in the damp, and that was showing some very uh, large difficulties for the likes of Sebastian Murray, who would go for a spin into the grass. Lucas Blakely, who was out wide going through the final corner, dropping the positions to McNeely and Queen uh, and nearly to Ping as well. And you can see the lead that Cooper Webster had picked up. There was drama in the background for Kulkarni, uh, who'd gone round. And then there was this. Look at the number three in the background. Clifford out way too uh, late on the brakes into the rear end uh, of Reynolds and uh, sending all of those out wide. Sid Smith would get a, a bit of a whack as well on the rear end, uh, losing his rear wing and would struggle uh, for the rest of the race, trying to get the car back round. He would lose a position to Theo Mercurius, courtesy of this, but was showing some excellent car control, keeping the car on the road in tricky conditions, slick tyres and no rear wing. Cooper Webster was coming under increasing pressure though from an extremely fast Liam McNeely. He was putting in fastest lap after fastest lap. It wasn't quite enough though as Cooper Webster would come through the final corner to take victory over Liam McNeely and a very, very emotional Lucas Blakely who was in third position. But uh, there was drama into the final corner uh, as well as we saw Clifford uh, making a bit of contact unfortunately with Aditya Kulkar uh, just a little bit too deep was Kulkarni coming back on the racing line. Clifford a lap down and making contact. So a huge win there for Cooper Webster, as we say, uh, cementing second place almost. It looks like that will happen in this race as he starts on pole position. We've got to talk about Lucas Blakely because Lucas Blakely, we talked about yesterday, he's the Formula One sim racing world champion. I don't know if that's on the new game or the game before. You can probably tell me yeah, that. But he's turned sim racing into his dream of actual real life racing. And yesterday was his first podium coming third. That's you know such a huge moment. And actually, we're going to see his reaction in just a minute. But that, that is huge to turn you know, a, 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 a virtual trophy into a real trophy. Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the thing with Lucas is that, again, I was saying before yesterday, we've seen that he's actually got really good pace in a real car. We've seen this in Formula 4, we've seen this in the Race of Champions stuff. And we're seeing this here in, uh, in, in GB4 as well. He's got pace, he's got skill, and he's kind of got the, the knowledge which is not an easy thing to translate. It just shows the level of, of ability that he's got. Um, you know, I don't know what we'll see him do in the future. Whether maybe we can see him in this. You know, obviously, budget's one of the, the major things on that one. But uh, I think like for, for me as a, as a big sim racing fan, and you know, for, for, I saw a lot on social media yesterday, the, uh, the support for Lucas was, was unreal. And again, you could just really feel that emotion from him. 
Yeah, I was going to say, what's the reaction been like in the sim racing yeah. world? But you just had to look at his Instagram story. He was sharing people, just celebrating him and, and just, you know, really being very pleased for him. And obviously, you're a two-time Simi uh, award-winning <laughs> commentator. Is that the official title? A two-time VCA Simi award-winning commentator. That is me. So when Lewis says he's good, I mean, you know, you've got to, you've got to take his word for it oh, there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, see, uh, let's see what Lucas had to say. He was very emotional in the car. It took him quite a long time to get out of the car. Uh, if you watched the live stream yesterday, of course, you can go back and watch it. He was uh, crying, I think, when he was sat there. Just so much joy. And I spoke to him just after he got out of the car. This is your, your first podium in GB4. How do you feel? Ah, speechless. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon. Just first of all, massive thank you to KMR Sport for, you know, first of all, even giving me this opportunity to race this weekend. It's not something that I thought would, you know, ever happen again. Um, you know, I didn't think I'd, you know, be back. I didn't think I'd let alone be, be able to get a podium. So, yeah, very, very emotional because I, this is something that, for me, when I was younger, wasn't possible. So, you know, I'm a bit, you know, teary-eyed, but I'm not ashamed of it. I'm very, very happy. So, thanks to KMR Sport. Thanks to Pace Note as well for sponsoring me this weekend here at Donington. So Donington and just a quick thank you to my, you know, my family watching at home because you know I know I'm sure they would have loved to have been here, but um, yeah, this is very much a victory because you know they supported me all these years, whether in karting or sim racing, and now here at GP4. So yeah, ecstatic. They'll be very proud of you. Just obviously you come from a sim racing background, and I know you can win races and get lap records and things, but there's nothing different. So probably getting a trophy, I'd imagine, in just a few minutes in front of people who have watched you race. That must be uh, something you're really looking forward to as much as you are emotional yeah it's one of the greatest one of the best moments of my life to be honest because i don't think this was this was unreachable when i was younger so yeah i mean i, pro I probably drove the slowest race on the planet once i got back to p3 because i knew i wasn't going to catch the leaders it would have been too much risk so i was like i'm going to take what i got i don't care how long it takes me to get to the line i'm just going to bring it in drove you know as level-headed a race as i could and i could i want to saw the checkered flag i couldn't believe it so yeah, look, risk management is all part of driving i'm going to stop ruining the best moment of your racing career so far i'll let you go and get your trophy uh, lucas blakely with kmr sport uh, third place driver as you can see absolutely uh, loving what he's just done and incredibly emotional if you're watching back home and supporting him you're going to really enjoy this because he's about to get his trophy yeah, very emotional for Lucas Blakely and, you know, the sim racing world and, and now the real racing world. I've all celebrated that. Amazing for him to not actually have that much time in the car and uh, show great pace and show great race craft as well. And now he's got a trophy to take home and he may even have a couple more because we've got two more races coming up. Wasn't a great day for the four new drivers. Well, we're mixed four shoes, let's say, for the four new drivers we've got on the grid. Uh, starting with Finn Harrison, who had a bit of a, a moment early on. Yeah, of course, there was that uh, that issue with Jack Clifford coming down to the hairpin uh, out the back end of the circuit. There was uh, contact Clifford coming in quite hot, uh, hit the back of Harrison and uh, you know, there, was, there was a bit of a bit of carnage in there. So easy to do in a race like that. Caught up a couple of people. Sid Smith was also involved in that uh, as well as, you know, it feels like half the grid. It was such a, a big accident. Um, you know, Dan Hickey also got involved, but he was already a lap down at this point. It was it was a bit of a mess, really. It was a bit. And we talked to Sid Smith actually yesterday. We looked at his car, uh, a little impromptu oh, visit to look yeah. at his car there was no rear wing the tire was the huge gouge mark out of that he said there was something wrong with his front right after a, another moment and you know he did incredibly well to, to keep that car on the road and, and do what he did Lexi Belk was another driver we heard from yesterday making her first appearance in the GB4 championship she's had quite a lot of testing time now to get used to things and up to speed and putting in much better lap times than when she started and showing great progress and then she didn't even make the grid. No, she gets to do her first race all over again though, so there is that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it, a big shame. We actually still don't know really what happened there, but it was coming out of the uh, of the old, old hairpin, coming up uh, under where the, the stuff is reduced to be. Uh, and it, from what we saw, it's just as if the car had died, but we don't know why that was. You know, it's we. Yeah, we've commentated on this championship now for, for two years. We don't see many, or if any, really mechanical issues or like that. So, um, yeah, we, we did see a lot of uh, issues with stalling the car last year towards the start. So maybe it was something like that and she couldn't restart the car. I don't really know and I don't want to speak uh, and guess, uh, but uh, it is what it is. Well, as you're uh, very nearly getting taken out by a recovery truck, uh, we will chat to some of the drivers and maybe we'll get a chance to, to chat to Lexi and, and see what was the issue with the car there. Uh, but first of all, we're here at Donington Park. Let's remind ourselves about the track. Well, to Leicestershire and just about at the Derbyshire border as we head to the 2.5 mile circuit of Donington Park. It was opened back in 1931 and is one of the oldest circuits in Europe. It is the oldest circuit in the United Kingdom still in use. An absolutely fantastic venue full of history and full of challenging corners. Big overtaking opportunities in the likes of Redgate, McLean's, Coppice, the Fogger ES, Goddard's, etc. And of course, for the brave, down into the old hairpin. The Wheatcroft State is the start-finish straight up 
towards Redgate and then down this enormous hill, 2.5 miles in length, but so much elevation. You get a real good look of it here as we come down the hill, through the craners, through the old hairpin, and then we begin that climb all the way up through Starkey's Bridge, Schwantz Curve, up towards McLean's. It is a fantastic circuit for racing and certainly one that will challenge all of our drivers this weekend. Here with Dan Hickey, after your first experience of GB4, I mean, how was it out there? It was a little bit chaotic. Yeah, chaotic is probably the best word to describe it. It was, um, we got a good start off the line um, and then managed to get a bit of damage to the front wing. Uh, so I had to pit within one lap. Uh, came back out after one lap uh, in front of Webster in front. So uh, had to let those guys pass, got down to the Melbourne loop um, and got caught up in an incident with a few other drivers, which literally I just couldn't get out of the way of. Um, so we end up with a DNF yesterday, which is a bit unfortunate for the first race, but uh, still good experience, good to get the first race out of the way and uh, looking forward to today. Much more favourable conditions today. The track was a, a little bit wet still yesterday, but today, although it's cold, the sun's out, you must be hopeful more of making progress. And I know you've got a lot of friends and family coming down. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Friends and family coming down later. So, um, so yeah, good condi well, better conditions today. Um, and we're starting on the different side of the grid today. Not that it makes a difference, but we started on the wet side yesterday. So that was a bit of another challenge to get off the line in the damp. Um, but yeah, so we'll see what today brings. Yeah, huge learning curve, GB4, but it's uh, something where you can progress really, really quickly. And we look forward to seeing what you can do. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Let's ride around the Donington Park Grand Prix circuit on board the Fortec car of Colin Queen. A downhill run to turn one of Redgate. Using all of the road on the left-hand side, you'll see use of the exit to open up the entry. Down to fourth gear, quite a fast apex here, and watch out for track limits on the exit. As we now have a long run down to the old hairpin, through Hollywood on the right, just staying right, trying to minimise any steering input. Left, the crane occurs, keep it left. To open up the entry into the old hairpin very fast, down to one gear, all the curb on the entry, all the curb on the exit. We now rise up through Starkey's, over to the right hand side, just setting ourselves up through Schwantz for a good entry into McLean's. McLean's is off camber and on the crest of a hill, so it can often push you wide as we've seen Collins done that time. Then using all the curb on the left hand side to open up Coffee's corner. This is a long exit here, so trying not to run too wide. And now we have the long run down past the exhibition centre. All we have to think about now is the braking point for Fogarty, which is a very, very fast and bump of chicane. Braking down two gears, fourth gear, one apex, two apexes, 140 kilometres an hour through there. And then just two more sharp corners to go. The first with the Melbourne hairpin. Braking downhill very late, down to second gear, late apex for a good run out of the corner, trying to minimise wheel spin. Car looks planted through there, four technically doing a good job on the setup. And the final corner, Goddard, again off camber, blind on entry. Trying to hook the curb on the inside if you can, slightly missing it this time out. And then a good exit out of the last corner to finish our lap of the Donington Park Grand Prix circuit. Well, I'm now down here at Fortec with Colin Queen. And Colin, the season's almost already over. It feels like it was only a couple of days ago that we were saying hi for the first time. What's been your highlight so far this year? Yeah, no, it's uh, been quite a fast season. It's, uh, it's gone by qu quite quick. Uh, and, you know, we've had a decent amount of podiums this year. I believe eight so far. Uh, but, you know, we, we've always had the pace this year. It could have been better. Uh, you know, the consistency could have been a bit, a bit more rock solid. But, you know, I think... You know, just just learning, learning slicks and winks for the first time. It's been you know absolutely great. I think I've maximized the most of it. You know, in terms of uh, speed and uh, you know consistency, just around you know uh, a race, a race distance. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm prepared for the next step. Yeah, huge progress. And obviously, you've been over here in the UK in your first taste of living abroad. I imagine. How's that been for you? Yeah, no, I've been living over here for three years now. Oh, okay. So since I was 16. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, you know just uh, another home for me you know it's uh, been living here more than I have in Florida and uh, you know it's made a lot of friends around here uh, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to another you know, four four years around uh, in this country and you know, good you know fun. yeah good fun you mentioned obviously Florida going back home I guess you'll probably be escaping here to go and see friends and family as soon as you can and maybe get a bit of warmth because it's pretty cold here uh, yeah definitely looking forward to the weather uh, it doesn't really change much around there except for the you know two to three p.m. showers uh, but no uh, you know it's just all about 
you know, training as hard as I can for next season, being prepared as I can, and you know, I believe that next year we can do quite well. You say you're ready for the next step finally. Is that GB3? Have you had a go at a GB3 car yet? What's the plan? No, not yet. Uh, I have a two-day test at Snedderton uh, after the race weekend, so I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, you know, I, I believe that GB3 is, is the next big step for me. It's the right step for me. Uh, and we are, it, it's at the top of the list in okay. terms of series. Well, we've loved seeing what you've done in GB4, so uh, if you do move to GB3, we'll look forward to that next year. 100%, no. And, uh, you know, I can't thank uh, you know, Mr. Palmer for putting on such a great, great series. You know, it's so professional. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much so far, and I think that, you know, if I can just stay here as long as possible, it'll be great for my future. Yeah, exactly. That's GB4 is all about that, setting you up for the future. Two races to go, though, in the season. It's not over yet. Uh, go well in those, and we'll hopefully catch up with you on the podium. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Colin Queen is correct. GB4 has been excellent for the couple of years it's existed. Two more races to go in the championship. Uh, we can see the car there of Cooper Webster that we started on. Uh, Cooper Webster yeah, starting on pole position there, again, double pole for him. Uh, he's pretty much nailed down but second place with Liam McNeely, the car we can see just being wheeled in behind us here, uh, just getting into position starting third there and that's where Liam McLeely is in the championship third of course Tom Mills with KMR Sport wrapped up the championship a couple of uh, well probably about a month ago now not a couple of weeks uh, at Brands Hatch so great season for him with 10 race wins let's go for a little walk now we're going to find Max Maserati in just a second in fact I'm going to maybe not get uh, taken out by Colin Queen's car here of course Colin we just heard from here coming over from Florida and spending a few years in the United Kingdom and really seemingly loving his second home here in the United Kingdom and it's great to watch these drivers grow up as they come into the championship from 15 years and grow with us and hopefully move on to things like GB3 and, and beyond as we've seen with some of our other drivers. Uh, let's go and chat to Max now because Max has been looking at the tyres that some of these drivers have chosen to use and Max we're looking at Theo Mercurius's car here, the Elite Motorsports car, to talk me through the, the situation with tyres. Well as you can see on the right side here which is the more actually the the less used side of the circuit you only have two left handers here so that's on the right it's going to be used they has gone for a set of news probably thinking that way it's scrubbed in nicely for the last race a lot of the other drivers here have decided to go with no news and then therefore they're going to be very it's going to be a tougher race for them this one but then they're going to take the new tires in the next race on the left side where you can use it more banking on the fact that the right side is only going to be using two corners for both the last race and this race have a more even baseline for the reverse grid race mm. the front guys however have all gone new on the left side trying to optimize the grip for where they're starting because they know that this is where the big point points for them are going to be scored this weekend yeah and obviously the track will get warmer as the day goes on we have the sun beating down on us here it's bright but it's not necessarily that warm but a little bit warmer than earlier now max you're obviously a driver coach for seb murray and harry burgoyne jr with graham brunton racing and you know you've set these drivers up to do the best they can and you've been imparting the sort of knowledge that you've got driving these very cars around these tracks all this year and it's great to see the good work you're doing having come from being a driver in GB4 last year. We also have the GB4 champion Nicholas Taylor working with the Fortec team and I'm pretty sure he's around somewhere, he's just there. I know he looks a little bit busy but Max I think you should go and interview Nick I'll, as driver uh, coach on driver coach. Yeah? I'll, I'll go ask him. So Nick Taylor, the reigning GB4, well not reigning GB4 champion anymore, yeah. but last year's champion. Obviously you're the coach of Fortec. So what are all Fortec secrets that are going to be played out in this race? Their secrets, I can't say anything. <laughs> what have you been telling your drivers then about, you know, tyres and warming and well, to make the most of it? It's like really cold right now, so just work the tyres, work on... I mean, there might be two formation laps, I'm not sure, one formation lap, whatever it is, just keep working it, work the brakes, everything like that. Nice, nice. Again, nice. That, that, that key point that there might be two, two warm-ups here and laps here in this race because of qualifying. Um, we did it in the wet, so that normally means that if you do it in the opposite condition for the races, you then get an extra warm-up lap just to give yourself a bit more feel. Very rare you see that going from wet to dry, though. Normally that's dry to wet conditions. There we go. Driver coach on driver coach. Ollie Dutton, of course, uh, Nicholas Taylor's boss, the team principal of Fortec Motorsports. Let's go and have a quick look at some of the cars. We haven't actually uh, looked at Dylan Hotchin's car. 
and it's the striking car. I know Lewis is a massive fan of Dylan's uh, car. And this is the car, that, a little close up, we heard on the commentary yesterday. Cameraman Ben's gonna get right in there. We're gonna look at some of the detail here. So I know Lewis is a huge fan of the fact that everything is pink, right? So the car is obviously pink, we can see that there. Uh, Dylan's helmet has got some pink on it as well. And if Ben can maybe just get in on the steering wheel, I think Lewis was talking about this yesterday, that even the steering wheel has pink grip tape on it as well. So it's a very much on brand with the pink, which I like. And you know, if you've seen their, what's it, golf buggy that we've had on the show before, also their truck, which I can see in the distance over here, lots of pink on that as well. You're not going to miss them coming, are you? Especially with the wheels. No, it, it is really, really nice. Um, the wheels are just, it's a, it reminds you of like 2009 Formula One, where everyone was having these like really cool uh, wheels, Braun GP. Mm you know, especially. So yeah, it is a really, really nice touch to see that that love and care go into this championship and into this car. And you can see that a bit as well with our new driver, Lexi Belk, another really nice livery that's come in. You know, like, like it's, it's all part of it. I mean, when the many crowds, as we can see around us here, go around looking at the awnings, you are attracted to the cars where you're like, oh, wow, that, that one looks really, really cool. You know, yeah. I want to get a photo of that. Well, what they've done with Lexi Boat's car, which is just to the left of Dylan Hodgson's car here, number 98, is they've gone with pink as well. And obviously they are sort of collaborating together. They're two separate teams, but both privateers. You can see they've, they've also gone with orange, which I don't think is mixed with pink quite a lot, Max. I know you're quite a stylish man. Would you, <laughs> would you mix an orange with a pink? I think it's brave. I think it's very brave. <laughs> but she pulls it off. <laughs> she does indeed. I think actually Piers Pryor, who's normally here, and you know, shout out to Piers, who's uh, not here for this final race weekend. Obviously, former British F3 driver with you, Max, and uh, our expert and co-commentator normally. He's famed in, in racing circles for his pink helmet. So he would actually he is, fit yeah. really well into Dylan or Lexi's team. So perhaps maybe we next season, we could see him in one of their teams. Yeah, yeah. Or, a good word for or us. Or Thomas Lee. Thomas, Thomas Lee, Lee as well. Pink as well. Yeah, it, we've, it's spreading, it's contagious. We've got quite a colorful uh, back couple of rows to the grid here, haven't we? We really do. We really Thomas do. Lee, of course, we spoke to Thomas Lee uh, yesterday, straight after the race, and we were, we were trying to, oh, he's in the zone. Look, he's in the zone. He's doing his horses. He's boxing. He was he's in the boxing. zone, you distracted him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here, hang on a second. I've got to speak to Thomas Lee. So, sorry, I just saw you with your pre-race ritual there. Just talk us through the hand gesture. What's that, a bit of air boxing? <laughs> well, I'm trying to warm it up because it's so cold. <laughs> so sorry. I know you come from uh, warmer climates and that's where you're based. We spoke to you yesterday. We were asking whether your kids were watching. Did you get any feedback from the kids? Were they watching? Did you, did you cry in the end? Because we were trying to make you cry on the stream. Well, on the inside, I was crying deeply. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, we have two more races in the GB4 Championship and it's been great having you here. I'm guessing you're just going to throw it all out there as you always do. Yes, yes, 100%. Yeah, but you know, on the series note, I mean, def definitely um, going to try my best, you know, to do well. So. Excellent stuff. Well, look, we look forward to seeing you out there. We're going to let you continue with your, your hand gestures. I can actually see Thomas Lee shivering. <laughs> so he's not lying. <laughs> he's absolutely freezing, Max. When you're, when you're driving around in these cars, obviously there's no roof, there's no windscreen or anything like that. Do you prefer the, the warmer situation where you're too warm in the car or would you rather be too cold? Because oh, Too warm, but to be honest, you don't really, once you're out there, once the engine started, it acts as like a heater anyway. So you're actually quite nice and warm. Then once you're on circuit, you don't notice it. Uh, it's a, these become such a little hot box when you're sitting in there with the engine and the fuel sitting directly behind you. You really don't actually feel cold once you're going. Mm. Maybe to be fair, when it gets a little bit colder into the pre-season testing months of November and January, then yeah, then that's pretty bad. You know, you can't yeah. put your feet after a session, but. Well, there we go. Right it's... now we'll be okay. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, not the first time we've made a, a car a hot box. Right, Max Maserati is going to run away now because the cars are going out and he's got to run a, a long distance, although I've heard he's getting a lift with someone's golf buggy. So lucky him. Uh, this is the first race today, the second race of the weekend in the GB4 Championship. We have the reverse grid race coming up in this and also the GB3 Championship where we will decide a new title winner in that championship. But for now, let's see some excellent racing in the GB4 Championship here at Donington Park.
So we've got, what, got just two races left to go in the GB4 Championship. The penultimate one uh, on the horizon and the championship sorted. Almost as near as makes no difference. Second is sorted. Third is sorted. Fourth is sorted. Fifth is a big fight. We'll talk about that in a few moments' time. But basically what I was saying is that this is just a hunt for glory. Nothing else. Just focus on the individual race and go after the victory. That is what is going to make this one exciting. I can't wait to see who's going to come out on top. McNeely was so fast yesterday. Cooper Webster was uh, keeping himself a little bit under the radar. Colin Queen wants to go out for something special uh, in, the, uh, in the final or penultimate race of this year. The final one from a standard uh, grid spot as well. So there's a lot to play for in this grouping and of course we'll have to wait and see who's going to come out on top it's going to be a fun one uh you know obviously drivers like colin queen they've not won this year despite having a pole position so uh, you know maybe there's a, a bit on the horizon there uh, if a queen can get them if they can get themselves involved the formation app will start, and I want to give you a bit of an update because we were talking about this in the GB3 race that we had two formation apps. This will be just one uh, that Cooper Webster will have to traverse before we get to that race start. He'll be starting the one from pole position, though, alongside Liam McNeely. And McNeely looking to go after that race victory uh, that he couldn't quite grab from Webster yesterday. Colin Queen still looking for his first one of the season. Lucas Blakely looking for another podium after he was so emotional by grabbing third yesterday. And it was an amazing moment for the KMR Sport team. Uh, behind that, inside the top five, Finn Harrison, who had big drama uh, later on. I did call him uh, Reynolds on the on the, on the the uh, highlights. We won't talk about that one too much. But Finn Harrison will be the one starting from fifth place. Jack Clifford uh, starting the one from sixth place uh, in his KMR Sport car. And then we get Zach Ping and Sid Smith, another one of those drivers that was involved in that issue uh, with Clifford yesterday. Uh, we've got Harry Burgoyne Jr. and Aditya Kulkarni inside the top ten. Uh, Kulkarni being uh, one of the drivers that will be starting from the reverse grid later on. Theo McCurry is down in 11th position, a bit further down than where he was yesterday, but did finish sixth in the race. Sebastian Murray, uh, who had a couple of spins in those tricky conditions yesterday, which we are still continuing with. Uh, he'll be rolling off of 12th place with Dan Hickey uh, and Dylan Hotchin at starting from 13th and 14th position. Just two more positions left to go before we reach the end of the field. It's Lexi Belk uh, and Thomas Lee down the back end of the order, of course. Commentary, uh, myself, Lewis McGlade, Max Maserati in the commentary booth. And uh, yeah, it should be a fun one. Championships are all as near as makes a difference, even for second, third, fourth. You know, those ones are all kind of set. It's that fight for fifth, and, uh, and, and basically everyone's just looking for the race victory. Yeah, yeah, it, it's going to be an extremely exciting penultimate round of the championship. Um, this is the last chance for those, well, I say last chance, obviously there's the reverse grid race, but it's going to be much more difficult. This is the best opportunity for those of Colin Queen, you know, Cooper Webster, Liam McNeely to score another a win or their first one of the season. Certainly so. Well, there is Sid Smith again, uh, rear wing, uh, back attached to the car. Do you think there would be, obviously quite a few cars got involved in that incident. A few you got uh, copped a bit of a whack from behind. Uh, we saw the, the, the tyre damage on Sid Smith's car. Do you think there was any further damage or was it just the rear wing? Yeah, they didn't have to do too much. Uh, I, I believe it was just the rear wing, but um, only the team would really know that if there was anything, you know, with... But it, it didn't look like it was heavy enough contact that it would have done more than that like you know like something like a gearbox or something like that i think they'd be okay i think it was just the rear wing by the looks of it i mean he was able to continue so i think if it was a bigger issue he would have known about it and he would have definitely have come in certainly so well uh, cooper webster lee mcneely you know that they're, they're separated by enough points where if they kind of if they hold on to their position if mcneely doesn't get past cooper webster uh, then the fight for uh, for second position uh, will be over cooper webster will have it that's what he's just trying to hang on to at the moment but it is a very large gap between the pair of them uh, and i get the feeling that cooper is probably going to try and put on a similar performance that he did yesterday will it be good enough a victory or will mcneely steal it from him we'll get ready for the penultimate race in the gb4 championship partnered by the brdc as we go into the first corner cooper webster with a decent launch Liam McNeely with a terrible one and once again Lucas Blakely straight around the outside of the Fox Motorsports car it's a better one though from Colin Queen who sweeps up in the second position Lucas Blakely then into third place and Liam McNeely under a lot of pressure from Finn Harrison it's two by two by two going into turn one it looks like Harry had to get ahead of Sid Smith there but they're all so close in that mid pack amazing from the front boys Queen into second place yeah, Blakely holding third and oh, Sid Smith's gone off after contact with Kulkarni. Yeah, but he's going to be in that gravel trap and unless he can keep this one rolling, he's just going to try and get this car moving. He hasn't come to a stop, so uh, we should be able to drag him out of the gravel trap. As long as he doesn't beach himself, uh, we should be able to escape without a safety car. But you can see how difficult it is here. Oh, oh it's Jack that? 
Beaten Beaten at the moment, and that will be potentially beeped in the uh, in the gravel. Exactly, this could be a safety car here, and then it's going to be really crucial for the boys to have kept that tyre heat in that they've worked so hard to get on this first lap. Well, oh, and oh, Sid Smith has beached as well. He hasn't made it out. Stop spinning the wheel now, Sid. There's no point. There's no point, I'm afraid. Ah. Oh. He's so close as well, yeah. so close to making it back on, back on the tra circuit. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one there. I mean, it is a big gravel trap there uh, at the old hairpin. Uh, battles further behind. Oh, Pete was going, was going down the inside. We looked there at Clifford, who's stationary and uh, you know struggling, a little bit frustrated with what's happened. Uh, the safety car, safety has car, now safety been car deployed. is out. Yeah. Wow, what what a what a first lap there. Extremely exciting. Um, looks like you know this is going to be a big opportunity to let cars through. Looks like there's something going on between Kulkarni and uh, Theo, yeah. uh, but Kulkarni's got a broken front wing. I don't think he's realised. Uh, he should pit. He's going to find out very quickly when it restarts. But it looked like his front wing was damaged. We'll see them coming by the cons. Yes, he hasn't got a front wing. He hasn't got a front wing. Yeah, and obviously I think that might be Kulkarni that was the one that made contact with Clifford, uh, potentially. I mean, you can only suggest on the fact that there's a car off the road, there's a car that's damaged, uh, two plus two. There is the front wing. It was on the exit of the uh, the hairpin where it's dropped off. So obviously, yeah, like I say, in that contact or wherever he's made contact with someone, it's come loose uh, and now it's just come off. Uh, thankfully, you know, that one was uh, was rescued pretty quickly, but obviously we need the recovery team to get Sid Smith out of the way. Uh, there is the car uh, on the exit of the old hairpin. Now, of course, that one will absolutely have to move, but you can kind of see... Even there with the with the tire marks and stuff, obviously as people have run wide and then uh, cut straight across in the, you know, the Jetta races and uh, such before, it's still really really wet in that grass. It is, and and once you hit the grass and it's wet, you're not stopping. You know, it, it acts as like it kind of lifts the carpet. And you're just sliding, sliding, sliding. It looks like there's some big movers though from the start. Of that looking at this, the three big ones. So. Harry managed to make up three places there to get into sixth. Murray has also managed to make up four places to get into eighth. Really good start from him. And also, Lee has also managed to match Murray by making up four places to get himself into 11th. Yeah. And that should be one more, I think, once Kulkarni pits for a new front wing. Yeah, and of course, for, for Lee, those positions he's made up on, uh, Clifford and Smith, uh, the two that are obviously now out of this race. Uh, Hotchin being one of them who dropped back early doors, uh, and Lexi Belk as well. So um, obviously, we know uh, Thomas Lee uh, has some big fans. Most of them are just his family. but. We we, uh, yeah, we, we move. He's, a, he's, he's such a character. I, I did, I, every time we say, I'm like, I, lo I love Thomas Lee. Exactly. It's so much fun. It, it's characters like that that make the grid. Who are going to start? Yeah, so you can see that's a terrible start from McNeely. Just couldn't. Like, obviously, we were saying like the, 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 the when you're starting on the right side of the grid, it's a bit more moisture around. He just didn't seem to get going. Yeah, exactly. You get that little bit of wheel spin. And he was lucky not to lose more places, really getting pushed out wide there. You could see the guys a bit further back. This is where the contact happened then. So where's Kulkarni? He gets onto where it's a bit damp. Oh, they all check up. Yeah. Uh, just, he just broke too late and ended up running into the back of him. Yeah, so that was where Sid Smith went off and walked out of the race. And hopefully we'll see what happened to Clifford. Uh, we can see here. So Clifford uh, with Ping. Oh, Ping. Oh, oh. Right into him. That's, yeah, that's fairly clear cut again, I'm afraid, with that kind of... Oh, and he tried to get up the inside of Harry. Oh, he, he did hit him. He hit him. And, oh, that's what happened. So Theo then hit Kulkarni, and that's how Kulkarni lost his front wing. It wasn't from... It wasn't from uh, the, the, the first contact. Which... I, I wouldn't think that was that Harrison. It was no. Uh, well, so, you know, to be fair, I'm actually going to uh, back off with uh, with making the judgments because every time I've got it wrong. So, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I said in the highlights, I called uh, I called Finn Harrison Harry Reynolds. He's not racing this championship for ages. Uh, 18 and 19, they're not different enough numbers. Think about it, numbers. 78. That's not being used. That was uh, that was obviously Jack Sherwood's number last year. Take that one. It's my number. Exactly. Or you can take good. 81. Eight, no. No. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Sorry. No one's allowed to take your no number take ever that. again. Ever again. Okay, uh, cool. That's uh, now awkward and uh, some, some higher in the commentary. That's fine. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, obviously it's fine, but uh, yes, there was either way, there was uh, plenty of contact uh, on that first lap. We kind of expect a little bit, and uh, I, I will uh, not dance around it. I think it was absolutely Theo McCurious, I think you got it right the first time, uh, that made that contact. So they have moved Sid Smith's car out of the way. Uh, I believe they've already moved Clifford's car, which would be here, so uh, they've already got that one out of the way. So hopefully we go racing fairly shortly. Yes, um, hopefully either this lap or the next one. Look at them all. You got it. Literally, um, I said it to my boys for the for the warm up lap, and you know it, it relates to the same here on the safety car. You have to feel like this. This is what you like chain the gym for more than actually the racing itself. It's trying to keep heat in the tires. You should be working the car constantly. Your arms should be sore from the amount you're trying to go left to right with the brake, getting that heat into the that load into the tire. 
Well, they're having to stick a load in now because, uh, of course, our safety car pulling away. Lights off. The race will get back underway. Uh, I'm just going to give a bit of a shout out only because I think it's a hilarious fact that I'm looking at now. Dylan Hotchin has the fastest lap of the race. Let's go. Obviously, because of the safety car. We're not going to talk about it. Uh, we're about to get back racing. Cooper Webb has allowed that safety car to run off uh, massively. There is Sid Smith out with, uh, out with some fans now. Uh, and they'll be able to watch from the old hairpin. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience, those rocks are not the most comfortable to sit on. And it's a hell of a walk. It is. It's about as far away as you could be. There's no tunnel from that point to bring you over the side. You have to dribble all the way around uh, the outside, go up the Craner Curves, uh, then Redgate, and then you're in the paddock area. It's a, it's a tough one from there. Keep Webster, though, with the control, uh, but this time it's over Colin Queen looking after his first victory of the season. Lucas Blakely also in the hunt. Maybe we could see the uh, the Scotsman getting very, very emotional. Maybe there will be a first win on the card. So who knows? Cooper Webster, though, with the control, uh, would like to take yet another victory and do not count out Liam McNeely. He was the fastest driver yesterday. The Evans Grand Prix car has control of the race and Ooh. still hasn't very gone. Very late. Very late. He should have gone by now. I thought he had gone and he stopped. Now he's gone. But it's too late and it's... That it's allowed Queen to have the slipstream and Queen's going to have a go here into turn one. He shouldn't have left it that late. Oh, Queen's decided to tuck in, but here comes McNeely. Straight down the inside of Blakely. Big move down the inside and Blakely will drop back into fourth position. Blakely might also uh, lose out to Finn Harrison. Oh, no. Run. There's driving in the background. You've got Lee, uh, who's off. I think Lexi Belt was also one involved. Dylan Hodgins come through. Uh, and yeah, so maybe that might be another safety car required, uh, courtesy of, uh, of that incident. We've got 10 minutes and 40 seconds left to go in this one. We'll take a look straight Wait at the replay. Here we go. It's looking in the background. Everyone's side by side. Ah, oh, it's hard to see. It's hard to see there. Yeah, you see that. You see the last one. Basically, you see Lee coming back into shot with Lexi Belk, uh, and, and a pair of them sliding over the road. Uh, whether that was Lexi Belk sending one aggressively down the inside of the first corner, whether it was Thomas Lee cutting over the nose, or whether it was just a racing incident between the pair of them, uh, we do not know. And we're not race control, so we're not going to judge anyway. Uh, Thomas Lee's car is stationary. We've not had the call for safety car just yet, uh, but I do suspect if that car isn't moved, it is very much in the firing lines. So I think we might well have to get another one. Yeah, it's got to be. But what's going on with the battle? What's going on with these guys? Here we go, all coming into the hairpin. Look at the train of them. Everyone just lining up to do a move or to bend or try and do something. Again, Ping trying to look to the inside. Safety car, I think it has been deployed now. It has been deployed. Cool Carney, there should be some kind of flag telling him about his missing front wing because that could be potentially quite dangerous, him not knowing and understeering and and so on. But we did we did see this yesterday um, with Sid Smith when he didn't have a rear wing and he didn't as, as the, I don't know if he uh, got a black and orange flag the, uh, the, the, the the meatball flag the one that you have to come into the pit lane and repair the car certainly on the, on the on the first or even the second time that we saw him go past the pit lane he didn't receive the uh, the mandatory uh, pit stop basically board and which which surprised both of us yeah and I would suspect that surely we would expect the same for, 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 for Kulkarni as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of go back to like, because it's rare we've kind of seen this more this year, where people have like lost their front or rear wings and, and kept going. But I certainly remember last year, whenever it happened, if it wasn't the last lap, they were immediately given the meatball flag. Um, and I would just assume, you know, it, it, it's just a bit, you know, the the wings don't do a significant amount when they're doing a GP3 car. These aren't you know, the, all the grip doesn't come from the wings. They actually come more from mechanical grip, although the wings do still do something. You will notice it. You yeah. will notice it. So um, I still think it's worth letting letting him know because I don't even know if Kulkani actually knows yet. You know, we've had laps on the safety car and one restart lap. He might just think his tyres are cold at this moment. Yeah, I was going to say, you'll, you'll like, because uh, as you'll always hear when you're watching the F1 coverage about the like, you know, from Martin Brother and all that, they cannot see the, uh, the, the, the front wing at all they have they have no idea whether it's there or not they're effectively trusting that it is there and so when you kind of make that contact and you're like i think front wing is still there but you never know exactly the thing is that's annoying on the safety car he could come in pit join the back of the safety car and still have a good race through by staying out there it's actually meaning that he's restricting his progress now through the field yeah, certainly so. Well, uh, with the safety car out, they'll pick it up now. Uh, seven minutes and 50 seconds have to go, and you can see they've already basically cleared off uh, Thomas Lee's car. So I can see us genuinely going racing in a lap or so's time, um, which is great for us because we want to see uh, see this racing uh, uh, green flag all the way through. Uh, I did, did see someone in the pit lane. I think that might have been Dylan Hodgson. I saw pink. Potentially. Um, or it could be Lexi after the what happened at the restart there. 
Uh, it was Dylan Hodgson. It was Dylan, see, yeah, so yeah. Into the pit lane. Not 100% sure as to, to why. Maybe, to be fair, with Lexi and uh, Thomas Lee's uh, incident at Turn 1, Dylan Hodgson was also in the same bit, so maybe there was a little bit... Uh, maybe he picked them. up a puncture yeah, from any, the debris. You know, it, it could be anything. And because we didn't see the start of it, we don't actually know... Well, here we go, here he comes. Oh, he's come straight out. Unless it was a very swift stop. And they would, it couldn't... Oh, it could have been front wing, because that, that could be done quickly. That's a nose change. Or a very, very quick tyre change. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to find out. We'll have to, to find out. Oh, we're being told he's removed grass. That actually right, does that make makes sense. Right, that makes way more sense. Because yeah. I did see him with grass in the uh, in the uh, side pod. So. Um, and that's such an easy fix. That's a quick brush yeah. off and go. And it's good that he did that because you can now join onto the back of the field. He will actually have the warmest tyres because by the time he gets rammed and he's you know doing these high loads through the corners, driving at actual pace rather than yeah. safety car pace, he'll have really nice tyres. But if it goes green, this lap. Yeah, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. The safety car lights will go out on the back stretch. I wonder if they do go out if Cooper Webster will leave it as late as he did. That was, that is... Very late. It, that was super late. To, to, to it me, won't that was help too it. late. Yeah, I, I, it's not... Going that late, for me, it was the earlier you go, the more chance you're going to have of catching someone out. Yeah. Um, to go that late, you're actually, especially when you're actually coming just down the straight, you're just giving the toe to people. So... He really gave the, here we go, here we go, here's the restart. Let's see what he does. Will he try and mix it up this time, or will he try and do the same thing again? Kind of saw um, back in uh, Brands Hatch, you know, we were looking at Joseph Loke, and, uh, and like, when they were, when they were trying to restart, like I say, one time he went really early, second time he went really, really late. Uh, and, and like I say, you, you, want, you don't want to do the same thing twice in a row, because doing the same thing is predictable. Colin Queen will know, if he sat on the rear end, and uh, Cooper's not gone before the final corner, then Cooper's probably going to go, in the final corner. Exactly, and what Queen's doing is good. He's actually going, right, I don't need to warm my tyres up anymore. I'm just going to sit on this gearbox. When you go, I'm going with you. Yeah, let's see then. So Cooper Webster's just getting the final bits in. He's and gone. now he goes. He has put the foot down and he's start trying to pull away. But Co uh, I will say Colin Queen was wise to it as they head their way down into the final corner. Five minutes left to go in this race. Uh, from this point on, it should actually still be four laps uh, of racing around Donington Park in this one, unless we have another safety car intervention. So with four to go, Cooper Webster leads. Colin Queen behind. McNeely, Harrison, and then Blakely. Here's a bit of a look down the inside from Cool Carney as he's trying to get past the Ema Curious in the battle for eighth position. Yeah, he's trying to get that run. He's going to get a run down Craners now, but without that front wing, this is going to be quite interesting see if he can hang on, but this front field all very, very close together. Here comes Cool Carney looking for the move. Can't do it there. Yeah, and you can see that, like, clearly he's got a decent mechanical grip to get his way through uh, uh, through the old hairpin, but when you can Here see we how go. fast Look at it the difference is. Now. Like, through that really, what would be an easy flat left corner, you just saw the understeer just plough in. All yeah. struggling for grip out there. Yeah, you've got to see, you know, like, with with the cars being the way they are, like, obviously, you can tell that it's not, like, super important having that front wing, but, I mean, you can even see through the old hairpin, the the, 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 the tyres were just like, no, I don't really fancy that. Exactly, and look at the difference coming through Coppice now as they've all just streaked ahead of that. Someone was going to go for a move into the chicane. I think it was ping on Blakely. Uh, oh, it hasn't done it, but now he's going to get the run because Blakely went a bit of a ride there. Yeah, so Blakely is the grey uh, and blue KMR sport car. Zach Ping behind. Uh, and that's going to go straight down again. the inside. Big lock so up a little bit on the right. And but he's done it. Yeah, Lucas Blakely then straight around the outside and will be able to hang on. Fifth place still remaining in hands uh, of the Scotsman at present. Exactly. He's gonna he shouldn't have really defended that. I don't think he needed to. But then again, we have seen that Ping likes a bit of a lunge. So... Uh, he hasn't lost anything on the exit, though. No, still got really. a really good exit. We could see Murray closing in now on Cool Carney as well, who's lacking that front wing to give him the grip through the corners. Certainly so. And of course, uh, for, uh, for Harry Goy Jr. and Cool Carney, obviously involved in that fight, uh, in Broad in a fight for fifth position in the championship. But they came into this race, as far as I'm aware, level on points, 222 apiece. Um, so uh, very tight for those ones. Uh, and so for anything that Harry Goy Jr. can take over Cool Carney in this race, it'll give him an advantage in what will be a very crazy reverse grid race for the pair of them uh, as they try and uh, work their way through into the top five of the championship. Exactly. It's going to mean a lot. So these, these points that you can add on now, it all, all helps going into that final race of the weekend. As they come through, here we go. Murray attacking, attacking him. Is he going to find the way around here? He's looking for it. He's now looking to the outside. Got to be brave to do it around the outside of Coppice. He's thought about it. He knows I can get him on the exit here. Kulkani's parking it. He's trying to give him the harder line. Murray's moving to the outside now. Kulkani has to give him the space because he is there. He is there. Careful, boys. So Looks sure. wet on the inside. That was good thinking there to not break there and then end up steaming in and 
but he's going to have another opportunity now. Yeah, so he's going to try and get down the inside of the hair, but of course, the defensive line's being taken from Aditya Kulkarni uh, in that uh, in, the, in the red and white number 15 on the left-hand side of the shot. Blue highlights on Kulkarni's car, uh, representing Ford Tech, of course, uh, the Grand Brunton Racing Team. Sebastian Murray trying to find his way past, not taking any undue risk. There's still two laps left to go in this one. There's still plenty of opportunity to make your way past uh, without doing anything too silly and too over the line. Plenty of opportunities. He's got to remain patient. Exactly. But actually, interestingly, Kulkarni will be having less drag now without that front wing. So he'll actually have a little bit more on the straight yeah, line yeah. without that front wing, giving him that, that little bit, you know, that, that less, well, I say that, that less drag. So helping him but then obviously he loses out in the corner it's suddenly become a like a monza spec exactly uh, a monza spec gb4 yeah exactly exactly uh, obviously we don't go to monza so it's fine but um you know it's uh, it, you know, absolutely like sometimes uh, there are some advantages here and there obviously kilkani's doing a good job keeping that car on the road without understeering too much uh, still got a lap though to deal with that um, would the understeer also be heating up his front tires a little more or not really a little bit because but it's so cold anyway um right. I don't think it'll be... Oh! Oh, that's ping. big. That's big. That's going to be a safety car, a red flag. Yeah, that is exactly... He looked ping. okay. He was moving. He was moving. So, wow. But that show, that's the safety of these cars. You know, like you could see the rear end detach, which is what it's meant to do. The yeah. rear end is meant to detach to give it that crumble zone. And here's Harry having to defend from Theo, who we saw was on those new tyres. Lock up on the wet. Red flag. Red flag. Red flag. Yeah, uh, of course, that, uh, that that probably would have you know, leaked a little bit onto the, the road. Like I say, I mean, these cars, uh, yeah, when it comes to this, uh, it's a, a car which has been tried and tested a lot in Europe. Uh, you can see that Ping is out of the car, thankfully. Uh, that is on the exit of McLean's. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm Genuinely, I'm trying to work out how he's hit the wall that hard from that angle. Yeah, and Cooper Webster doesn't know what he's meant to be doing here because he's kept going round and everyone else is following him. You either, I think, it's stop on the grid or follow or the marshals into the pit lane, isn't it? Yeah, unless he, he might have been given guidance from the marshals. Exactly. We'll see in the back oh, he just got on the grass! Massive, massive crash. Again, it's just showing the, the safety of these cars. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, like I say, he'd run wide out of uh, McLean and then gone straight into the barrier. Like I say, these these cars, you know, they, they are um, older cars, which makes GB4 cheaper um, to run in. But that doesn't mean they're unsafe. These cars have been tried and tested over the last, you know, five or so years. Uh, the, the reason why we pick you know, to race in these cars is because they are as safe as you can get. Yeah, there's a lot of technology in them. Uh, yes, it's a lower formula, but you still have all of that technology which makes it as safe as possible. You have all that, the crash cells, the, you know, the crash structures in the car. They are, in a sense, designed to to break. They're designed to be crashed in that sense. Exactly. It looks like on TSL they've called the race as well. Yeah, they the will do. Flags, which makes sense. There was less than a minute to go in that race, so you couldn't do a uh, a warm-up lap and then a start. Yeah, no. Uh, and also, you know, when it comes to you know, this this day, we've got um, a, a, a long a long day of racing. They don't want to bleed into uh, into too much of the other time. And like I say, we basically uh, are done with the race. Uh, it was going to be, if, if not, it was going to be a safety car, and that would have cooled it there. Uh, but Cooper Webb then will take another victory. He did quite well that race. Obviously, he didn't have to do too much. It was just you know timing the restarts uh, well, and you know he, he pieced it together as well as he could. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He did everything he needs to do there. Um, first restart, I think he gave himself a bit more work than he had to, but second restart, he did a good job. Went early enough. Uh, Queen was just very good on the restarts himself as well, both times. Didn't, unfortunately, have the opportunity to really challenge for, for the lead there. McNeil obviously doing well to get himself back on the podium after a not the best start. And uh, it, it looked like a very, very entertaining but um, hard race with the dry and the wet. Certainly so. Well, Cooper Webster will take that victory then. Colin Queen in second place and Liam McNeely, the top three that we've seen so many times inside that top three. Uh, but they all get onto the podium together. Uh, of course, no Tom Mills in this one, so I think it might be the first time we've seen them all three on the podium together uh, without uh, all three of them at the same time. Uh, we'll catch up with those in a few moments' time. Finn Harrison will finish in fourth position, which is good for him. Uh, again, debut weekend for him. Lucas Blakely inside the top five once again. Harry Burgoyne Jr. in sixth place. Uh, so great for you and great uh, for Burgoyne Jr. and his uh, charge for fifth place. Liam McCurious in seventh 
seventh place with Kilkarni dropping down to eighth, but doing a really good job to hang on without that front wing. Uh, of course, Sebastian Murray in ninth place and Dylan Hodgson inside the top ten. Uh, those positions further back from there, we've got Dan Hickey uh, and Lexi Belk. Obviously, after uh, Belk's issue with Lee earlier on in the race, uh, Manchester finished in twelfth place. Uh, Lee, a retirement from the race. Clifford, a retirement from the race. Smith, a retirement from the race. And whilst Ping is further down, uh, he will probably be moved up ahead of Lee, um, but still technically counts as a retirement. Only the, I think it's because like his time has stopped uh, coming back down. Um, we'll see Cooper Webster though out of the car, and uh, like I say very happy. Yeah, yeah, very very happy. I think he's he, he's basically got it secured, hasn't he? There, you know, P2 in the championship, another win under his belt. Now we can just look forward to the reverse grid race and have as much fun as he can in it. Certainly so. And of course, uh, I will let you know, by the way, the podium ceremony after this one, uh, we'll be doing the um, the the, the uh, end season, basically, the podium for this one. So we'll be uh, handing out the, the, the trophies for the championships and stuff, obviously, to, to KMR Sport, Tom Mills, etc. That will all be dealt with after this race, which, to be fair, uh, the battle for second and third is also um, effectively over because Cooper Webster and Liam McNeely finishing where they uh, where they are uh, means that Cooper Webster will be secured in his second position I believe uh, McNeely still might have a chance of losing it to Colin Queen although a very unlikely one yeah yeah but unlikely in GB4 can become very likely in a that matter of true. seconds <laughs> you know it's it's what again makes this championship so exciting you know because they haven't got that extra aero platform to have dirty yeah as we saw that uh, the racing is extremely close intense fun you can go for more optimistic moves because the braking zones are longer you know the the toes more powerful um it's such an exciting championship it, it was all last year and it has been all this year you know and you almost wouldn't have known it was a tom mills domination by how exciting the racing actually was throughout it yeah, certainly so. Well, Cooper Webster is down there, and I believe we're almost ready to catch up uh, with John Jackson to uh, to go and find our drivers. Cooper Webster well. here, just chatting through the race. All oh, looks very calm here, doesn't it? Just hands behind his back, loving it. Let's just let him get his photo. There we go. Line of photographers here, making sure Cooper gets a memory of this moment. Quite a lot of photos actually like this. He's probably getting a nice little collection along with his trophies. We'll jump in in just a second, here we go. Uh, Cooper, another dominant performance from you, a little bit disrupted there by the safety cars, but in exactly what you want to do, and it just shows how much you've got to grips with this car this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what really gave me the race then was the good start. Um, I didn't have any competition into turn one because I got the good jump. And then, yeah, I was a bit a bit sad we didn't get to do more racing laps because um, sitting behind the safety car is never fun. But uh, yeah, I hope the other driver that's the cause of the, res, the red flags are right because uh, it looked like a pretty pretty big damage. But um, yeah, exactly what I wanted to do in that race and, and score maximum points. I'm sure everyone that's watching uh, back home in Australia and everyone that's watching here in the UK is looking forward to the reverse grid race. That's a chance for you to do a bit more overtaking and uh, a bit more racing. Yeah, I mean, it'll be entertaining to watch. I don't know how keen they'll be on waking up at like 3 a.m or whatever it is at home, but um, I had a mum and uh, my sister and uh, Joe, who's my mate at, back at home watching, but um, yeah, so we'll, we'll look forward to the last race. You know, we've done the, the more important races now and it's time to, you know, enjoy the last race and um, yeah, just do the best I can again. With second place in the championship cemented, it's time to have some fun, I think. We'll look forward to watching you race for one last time later on. Yeah, thank you. Nice one, Cooper Webster there with Evans GP. Uh, let's find Colin Queen. So obviously we heard from Colin uh, just before the race, driving for Fortec. Hey, Colin, got to bring you in here. We heard from you uh, before the race there, and you were looking to finish the season strong. Great to be back on the podium. Yeah, it is. You know, it's not like the way we liked it. You know, for, first of all, I hope the kid's okay. That was that did look like a bad impact. Uh, you know, it was quite an uneventful race, to be honest. Three racing laps. Uh, you know, the rears didn't really come in as we wanted them to, but you know, we tried, managed it. Uh, not much else you could do. We were talking before about tyres, me and Max Maserati, and we were just discussing what, what options tyres people are going on. What kind of tyres have you got left over for this reverse grid race? Yeah, we just have the two new tyres. I just decided to uh, have the first laps be as, as strong as possible, uh, you know, on you know, already on the run-in tyres. So it didn't really work out the way we wanted them to, but you know, the reverse, reverse grid should be strong. 
Fantastic. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that. Congratulations, Colin. Uh, Colin Queen with Forte. We'll have a quick word with Liam McNeely. Liam McNeely always runs away. Oh, here he is. I'll just go and find him here. Hey, uh, Liam, very quickly before we get the presentation, uh, good to be back on the podium and ending the season strong. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, ceiling, uh, third position in the championships, obviously, you know, pretty good. Um, and yeah, just another podium to add to the collection now. I was going to say, I saw your dad earlier on getting all the breakfast in, uh, looked, making sure everyone was, uh, was all right. Is he happy with how things are going? I mean, Sid's had a little bit of adventure on the grass there, maybe a future in rallying for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, my dad's been, uh, yeah, I think he's really happy. Um, obviously, first season in Sticks and Wings, so yeah, I don't think it could have gone much better, really. Absolutely. We'll let you go and uh, get your trophy on the podium. Liam McNeely uh, with Fox Motorsport, of course, his dad, Paul McNeely, is the boss of Fox Motorsport. And it's nice to see that Paul was up bright and early, first person I saw this morning, getting all the food in for the team. A happy team makes a successful team. Let's watch the podium and also the presentations for the end of season. Cheers, Jonas. And yes, indeed, we uh, will get to see uh, all of that and, uh, and, and piece it all together. Uh, obviously, we'll start with the uh, the, the standard race podium uh, procedure. So uh, we'll see the drivers that finished on the podium in that race. Did hear the uh, the note there from Liam McNeely. I have obviously done the points. Uh, but yes, the uh, the top four in the championship are now secured. Mills, Webster, McNeely and Queen. Uh, they are all sat in their positions uh, in the top four in the championship and they will not change. Uh, there are battles behind that. We'll update you in the points after we've done the, uh, the highlights, uh, of course. But uh, before that, we'll have to deal with all of this and the celebrations that will go with. I'm sure we won't have too much champagne being sprayed around, though, because, uh, well, you know, for obvious reasons, uh, they've got another race coming up. So uh, we're not, they're not going to be uh, spraying any of that around. So you don't want to be going into the next race with a, uh, with a, with a soggy race here. I'm sure Max Maserati's got plenty of stories about that, although he's uh, around to go and, uh, and, and sell, uh, sort of um, uh, give some coaching advice once again to Harry Bergoyne Jr. straight after that race, doing a good job. Um, of course. Uh, so we'll get them onto the podium again. It'll be uh, uh, McNeely once again on Queen once again on Webster once again on uh, after what has been an interesting season. Uh, McNeely, I've said before, uh, he is now going to have seven consecutive podiums, which is um, a joint with Cooper Webster as the most consecutive podiums that we've had um, in the championship. And Tom Mills also had it from Snetterton up to the second race um, at Brands Hatch. Uh, he had seven uh, consecutive podiums there uh, of course for Tom Mills uh, five of those were race victories one of them was a second uh, one of them was a third for, for Cooper Webster uh, uh, five of them were second places two of them were race victories uh, but Liam McNeely now joins that fairly exclusive club uh, although none of his uh, have been race victories which been second or third positions uh, in that seven race streak uh, of podium positions he could make it eight and break the record of course Colin Queen back onto the podium we've seen him on the podium quite a few times this season but it's the first time that we've seen him since Silverstone uh, on to the podium uh, and of course Cooper Webster there taking uh, another victory to uh, to make his fourth of the season uh, obviously they're all uh, receiving their trophies from Gemma Mole uh, of course uh, GB4 championship coordinator uh, so passing those trophies out and uh, oh, I say they'll, uh, they'll be fairly well celebrated but let's be honest these three have picked up more than their fair share uh, of podiums nothing quite like the drama that we saw uh, just yesterday uh, when we had that uh, very emotional Lucas Blakely taking uh, taking to the podium. So they'll all take their top step. Uh, they'll all have the photographs taken and uh, they'll all step aside before we'll uh, drag back on a couple of them uh, back onto the podium because they'll uh, get themselves set for the championship top three uh, before we get those uh, trophies uh, handed out because uh, it's been a long season for them. It's been a tough season. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun though, but uh, it's been an awesome awful lot of uh, fun seeing these drivers uh, get better get bigger Liam McNeely into third position in the championship of course uh, Cooper Webster secured now in his second position in the champion was thought he was taking a big look at the uh, top step there uh, and then of course the top step our champion of the year it is Tom Mills big congratulations to him of course not racing this weekend uh, but still able to uh, to take to the top step and you know it's, it's fantastic to see Tom it's fantastic to see the, uh, the growth of the driver. And of course, uh, Jonathan Palmer here to hand out the trophies. There's one uh, for, uh, for Liam McNeely. Uh, for Tom Mills, a driver that's built himself up so much uh, over this year, came into it with so much pressure on his shoulders to the point where a lot of people were thinking, was it the right call to do GB4 again? Uh, you know, you, you, you basically, you can, 
you either have to win it, and if you don't, yeah, this is uh, you're in a really bad spot. Well, guess what? He came along and absolutely dominated. Fourth last year, and first this year as well. So uh, a very, very solid performance there for Tom Mills, uh, getting the uh, the novelty check there, the, the massive check as well, uh, and of course a. Big old trophy with it, the one that Nicholas Taylor uh, won last year. And of course, we'll have some very kind words uh, from Jonathan Palmer. Uh, it's been um, uh, a great performance uh, from him, uh, been a great performance from uh, the KMR Sport team, who of course are team's uh, champions as well. Uh, we'll get to that one in a moment. But, uh, you know, for, 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 for KMR Sport, for, you know, for Kevin Mills Racing, you know, they, they were so strong last year. They won the championship last year, so it shows that if you are coming into uh, into the GB4 Championship, well, that's the team you really want to uh, to join and to uh, to be a part of. Because when you're uh, in a team that's winning it twice on the uh, on the bounce, you know, it's uh, it's really uh, it's really putting you in good good stead. Of course, last year it was the team effort between Wolberski and Mills. This year, yes, obviously Clifford's done his bit, but it's mostly just been Tom Mills absolutely flying uh, around this season. Uh, he's, not, he's not done with trophies just yet, though, because John Cavill's about to hand out the George Russell Pole Position Cup. Uh, the driver uh, that's had the most pole positions this year, absolutely no one is shocked by that one. Started off the season with a pole position, uh, got beaten by his teammate in that race at Alton Park, though, Jeremy Fairburn, uh, backed it up with a pole position, who then backed it up with another pole position, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one, and, then another one, and uh, had a few races off, but just just kept the streak alive, kept building onto uh, onto pole positions, and just looked so so strong throughout the year. Uh, of course, Kevin Mills uh, will jump up to the uh, to the podium as well. Uh, this is to receive the, uh, the the team pole position cup as well. Uh, so again, uh, uh, very uh, impressive there uh, for Kevin Mills Racing to have uh, to have taken uh, the, the the team pole position cup. Of course, it's the the team of the the driver that's had the most pole positions, uh, and uh, we'll see him back on in just a second uh, to take the trophy for the team's championship for the second year season. He's off the podium, he's straight back on it. Uh, and then here comes a big one. Of course, Jonathan Palmer straight up to hand over a trophy. It's been an incredible year for the KMR sports team. Uh, Tom Mills taking victory in the championship way early uh, in the season. He did it back in Brands Hatch uh, and of course has just been a, a force to be reckoned with in the 2023 GB4 championship partnered by the BRDC. And that is uh, exactly why he and KMR Sport are the champions in GB4. Of course, for KMR Sport, like I said, the second consecutive year. <laughs> it's it's really lovely to see a team grow, to, to, to be strong, to piece things together, and to uh, build on the success of the past year. Uh, and put themselves in, uh, in, in a strong position for 2023 as well. And uh, who knows? next year holds for the KMR sport team uh, and for, for Tom Mills obviously got to get more photographs uh, from uh, from the from the podium uh, for Tom Mills we'll hand down though to John Jackson the founder of the GB4 championship Jonathan Palmer here the uh, man in charge of MSV Motorsport Vision who run this championship chatting to Kevin Mills from KMR Sport, obviously a family-run team down there in Gloucestershire, some excellent performances this year, and I know Kevin is insanely proud of Tom Mills for winning this championship and being so dominant as well with 10 race victories this year. You see Tom in the background having photos taken to remember this momentous day, and obviously, as Lewis mentioned there, he gets a cheque for £50,000 towards his next step in racing which is uh, you know, a huge prize. And I mean, his trophy cabinet now is gonna need extended. Huge amount of trophies for Tom Mills, such a, a dominant season. And obviously shout out to everyone at KMR Sport as well. Jack Clifford obviously played a, a huge part in this as well. Lucas Blakely's done really well too. And great to see Tom picking up his trophy. Not racing here this weekend, but uh, as they said on the commentary, great to see him here in the full suit. A bit of a John Terry moment there, like back in when Chelsea won full kit but it's fine he deserves it he's allowed to do it i'm going to sort of jump in and we're going to chat to jonathan palmer hopefully but i don't want to interrupt as he's having a you know a, a heated conversation with kevin mills and congratulating him on all the good work he's done and you know him our sport have been part of the gb4 championship from the very start huge in formula ford racing before that and 
you know, as one of the teams that have really embraced this championship, it only seems fair to let him have his moment and uh, discuss things with Jonathan Palmer. But I will jump in in just a second. Might see if some, well, you can see the rest of the KMR Sport team are going to come in for a photo just to the right here. And why not? A lot of people behind the scenes, of course. You've got to think of all the mechanics and everyone that runs the team. Emily Mills there, of course, plays a huge part in running the team. Also driver uh, sourcing and, and driver coaching and basically being there for everyone. So good to see these guys getting their moment. Let's get Tom in, why not? Jack Clifford's coming in as well. Of course, Lucas Blakely there on the right-hand side. Got his first trophy yesterday, coming third. Got very emotional, huge for him. Sim racing world champion in the world of Formula One. Turning uh, virtual racing into real racing and getting a trophy. So a huge weekend for him, a huge season for the team, KMR Sport. Little fact as well, the uh, KMR Sport logo you can see on all their clothes was also designed by Tom Mills. He writes the theme tune, he sings the theme tune. He does a bit of everything. And it's also nice the sun's come out for this today. Would have been a bit gloomy if it was yesterday. But yeah, huge season from them. Still waiting for JP to be free. You can't really interrupt the boss, can you? Here we go. It looks like he's maybe coming to an end. Actually, maybe not, no. Still going. They've got to that stage now where everyone stopped taking photos, but they're still standing there. And they're kind of, it's like at a wedding. You're not sure if there's going to be like photos together. Oh, a team photo. Here we go. There we go. Kevin Mills is getting in there, as he should. And I'm going to grab Jonathan Palmer. Huge celebrations from them there. Jonathan Palmer just waiting beside me here. Signing a poster. Jo I'm going to tear you away from your fans briefly. You can get back to them. Jonathan Palmer, uh, we've just been talking through what great work KMR Sport have done and, and being there from the start of GB4 and, you know, when you started this championship and, and had that vision as a uh, more affordable way to get into motorsports, they've totally embraced that and they've had much success this year, which, you know, just shows what you can do when you really go all in. Absolutely. I'm, 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 abs I'm, I'm really thrilled with the job that, uh, that, of course, Tom's done, Tom Mills in the car, um, but also the team and, of course, led by Kevin. Um, they were a big name in Formula Ford racing and let's face it, Formula Ford was that's one of the where I started, a lot of us started, um, but things have moved on. Formula Ford is no longer the step in the real step in the career ladder that it used to be. It has a niche, um, BRSEC run a series and a few of us do, but this is the first sort of proper championship with car with composite chassis, with wings, slick tyres. Um, and and K KMR were just the sort of team that I wanted to be joining this. You know, what we've got with GB4 is a much more affordable championship than FIA F4, British F4, which is, which is another great championship, but it is three or four hundred thousand pounds a season, whereas, which is a vast amount of money that a driver um, and his followers, sponsors, family have to try and find. GB4 is about half that, and, and that's, that's a much more affordable level. Um, Kevin has learnt, you know, in the early days, weren't easy. It was quite an evolution to come from a Formula Ford with no wings um, and intermediate tyres, you know, without un sort of treaded tyres. Um, but he's really put him, he's really worked hard at it, used his expertise um, and endeavour to come through to the top of the field as a team. Um, and, and Tom's been there all the way and he's just matured superbly as a driver as well. It's been it's very effective and you know they haven't run on a big budget. The budget they've been on has been a fraction of anything like British F4 and now Kevin has got, he's put himself literally on the podium and we very much hope he's, he's got a great career ahead of him. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, com competition with the other drivers. There's a huge battle for second which Cooper Webster's come over from Australia and, and beat Liam McNeely and beat Colin Queen and that's great to see. But also for me, four brand new drivers on the grid this weekend which just shows that people are looking at doing GB4 and also over in America in Texas we've got former GB4 drivers Megan Jilks, uh, Chloe Grant and also Jessica Edgar on the same racetrack as the Formula One cars and it just shows you the stepping stone that GB4 is. Absolutely it, the, the world needs an affordable um, but high quality start, start a single seater category and uh, the FIA originally considered that, that FIA F4 would do that but clearly it budgets to three to four hundred thousand and that's at the cheaper end the Italian Formula 4 is, is you're looking at more like six or seven hundred thousand with all the races they do so you know it's another level it is it's, it's great and it's and it's a very it's, it's a major part of the of the ladder towards formula one but i'm thrilled to say with the job gb4 is doing um, by using older formula four cars that still have got a lot of life in them um and, and are extremely safe 
uh, and it's providing these drivers and the teams uh, with this with this route to get on and prove that yeah they do deserve to get on they you know they can convince the sponsors the parents themselves that they, they deserve a future and move up through the Formula 4 and then the GP3 FIA Formula 3 FIA Formula 2 and of course ultimately Formula 1 that's where these guys all want to be it's great to see obviously we have the GP3 championship concluding later on it's all to fight for Callum Voisin and Alex Dunn two great drivers very quickly before we go to some highlights of this last race two great drivers that have shown us you know, what they can do out there and after Luke Browning and Yoel Granforce were fighting it out in the last race last season we've come back down to this final race again it's incredible isn't it we've got an enormous amount of talent in GP3 you know I, I think there's more talent in GP3 than I think anything under FIA Formula 3 the cars are great actually at the last weekend at Sanford as we probably all realised they were about a second quicker than the Formula Regional um, cars the Formula Regional European cars um, much more responsive and so close in performance which is one of the reasons why we've got different three different teams at the front different three different drivers and we're going to the very last race out of 24 races to determine who's going to be our champion and I'm, I'm in no doubt whatsoever that whoever does do that and you know we know we know who the who the, the who the top top three are who've got a chance um, but whoever they are, you know, they are going to do justice to to the, the reputation. They're going to have a very good chance in the in the uh, Aston Martin um, Autosport BRDC Award, and um, and ultimately, of course, to move into FIA F3 and do the sort of job that Zach O'Sullivan and Luke Browning have, have done and are capable of. Yeah, it's great to see also some of the drivers doing FIA F3 rounds while they're doing GB3 as well, including Max Essis and Callum Boyce and uh, Mackenzie Cray as well. So a fantastic season, Jonathan. It's been great chatting to you. Uh, I know you've got to you know, go and have conversations. You're a very busy man, but thank you very much for chatting to me. And we'll move on and we'll show some highlights of that race in the GB4 Championship. So highlights from the penultimate race of the GB4 Championship. Cooper Webster would lead them off from pole position. Another fantastic start from the KMR Sport driver of Lucas Blakely. He was getting around the outside of a poor starting Luke, uh, Liam McNeely uh, into that first corner. They were all working their way through. Colin Queen up into second position and a long, long lead uh, for our race leader. Heading down the hill, though, there was already drama. Looking back in shot, called Carney would make a little bit of contact with the uh, rear end of Sid Smith, who would be sent off the road and into the gravel trap. A big shame for uh, for Sid Smith and the Fox Motorsports team. He'd struggle his way through the gravel trap and unfortunately would come to a stop uh, that would bring out a safety car, but he wasn't the only one that ended in a safety car. Uh, this contact with Zach Ping straight to the side of Clifford uh, would bring his KMR Sport race to an end in the number three. Uh, there were some big sends uh, later on uh, in that lap as well. Ping down the inside uh, tried to make his way past uh, on Harry Bigoyne Jr. There was contact as well with Cool Carney versus Theo Mercuris. Safety car would come out. Once the safety car came back in, though, it was a very late restart uh, from our race leader in Cooper Webster who was trying to pull clear uh, of Colin Quinn. Liam McNeely straight down the inside of Lucas Blakely to remove him from the podium and make it the top three that we were kind of expecting to see quite a bit uh, throughout this round. There was drama in the background though uh, as Lexi Belk and Thomas Lee would make contact. Dylan Hodgson uh, would also return his way into the pit lane uh, to get some grass removed from the car. A safety guy had to come out once again to rescue Thomas Lee. Once we got back racing there wasn't very long left to go. Uh, Zach Ping with a big charge down the inside of Lucas Blakely who was able to hold firm around the penultimate corner of the racetrack uh, and that was fifth position uh, of course a red flag would come out after an issue for uh, for Zach Ping uh, going through the middle sector but that would give the victory to Tom Mills uh, to Tom Mills to Cooper Webster rather uh, of course who uh, who came across to take his fourth victory of the season we'll take a look at the championship standings um, of course again very provisional but I can tell you that basically the top four are locked in 505 points for Tom Mills of course he is our series champion he's 41 points clear of Cooper Webster uh, and Cooper Webster has had basically the perfect weekend so far uh, by taking a double pole and a double victory as well Liam McNeely in uh, third place uh, will be uh, a little bit too far off the uh, the rear end over 50 points behind Cooper Webster we've only got 35 points left to deal with same with the gap back to Colin Queen in fourth place uh, but then there is the fight for fifth Harry Bergoyne Jr versus Aditya Kulkarni just four points separating them in that battle to be inside the top five before we get to Clifford Sid Smith Jeremy Fairbairn and Ruhan Alva, of course, who's not racing here. Could be under pressure from Dylan Hodgson. I don't really see it. Hodgson's in 11th position in the standings at the moment, uh, about 30 or so behind. So maybe a bit too much um, of a gap. Uh, with all that sorted, though, we'll head back down to Jonas, who is in the paddock. Uh, third race. 
Thank you, Lewis. There's one more race to come in the GB4 Championship. It's the reverse grid race. That'll be at 4.45 later on. But now all eyes turn to the finale of the GB3 Championship. There are two drivers in contention. Callum Boyce in the championship leader and Alex Dunn with a win in the race that we had earlier this morning, which puts him still in contention to win the, race, uh, win the championship if he can do better than Callum Boyce in. Lewis McGlade will talk you through all the permutations a little bit later on. Join us just before 3 p.m. Make sure you're in place for 3 p.m. exactly where you're watching right now as we crown a new GB3 champion.